What's going on, everybody? John here with you. It's a little matinee hockey on President's Day. How's everybody doing out there on this Monday? So the Ottawa Senators, they're seventh in the Atlantic, head coach by DJ Smith. Their record is 27-24-4. Here's the starting lineup for the Sens. It's Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, and Claude Giroux with Thomas Chabot, Nikita Zaitsev, Early Greek, Alex Vrinka, Jake Batherson, Eric Branstrom, and Arden Zub, Shane Pinto, Austin Watson, and Matthew Joseph, Dylan Gambrell, Parker Kelly, and Julian Gauthier with Jacob Larson and Travis Hamannick. It's going to be Kevin Mandelizzi in net for the Ottawa Senators. He'll be getting his second start in the NHL. Mad Sogard has been pretty good, but off the back-to-back -back and off of the big 7-2 win, is going to get the start. This is against the Boston Bruins. Again, no Cam Talbot and no Forsberg. They're going to be week-to-week -week at that time, so we're going to have the young, young guns in the net. And for the Boston Bruins, it's Jim Montgomery squad. They're 42-8-5 on this season. They've been the best in the NHL pretty much since the onset. Patrice Bergeron, Brad Marchand, and Jake DeBrusque with Matt Grizzly controlling McAvoy. It's David Krejci, Pavel Zaka, and David Pasternak with Hampus Lindholm and Brandon Carlo. Charlie Coyle, Taylor Hall, Craig Smith, Trent Frederick, A.J. Greer, and Nick Foligno with Derek Forbert and Connor Clifton. Linus Olmark should be getting the start for Boston. So here's the thing for the Sens that most people do not know. When you talk about this team, they've been a little inconsistent. But they've not been inconsistent lately. They're 7-1-1 one, one in their last nine. If you want to go out of 10, it's 7-2-1. and one. But they've been hot. And when you talk about Brady Kachuk and Stutzla and some of the other guys that I've always mentioned, they're young. They're all between 20, 24 years old. So that core is all set to go between Stutzla, Kachuk, Alex Dabrinka, Jake Batherson. Everybody wanted this to happen right now as far as the Sens and pushing for a flap spot. But, again, they're right there. They just need to be able to continue points at this pace. And if you continue the 7 one one of the last nine, you'll probably get to it. So that's what they need to continue to do. The interesting part for the Boston Bruins is now that they're in TD Garden in this matinee day game. you got two more meetings because they're Atlantic Division foes. Ottawa and the Florida Panthers are the only two teams in the NHL that beat Boston twice. So I'm not going to say it's going to happen again, but Ottawa should have the confidence even off the back-to-back in -back the 7-2 win against the Blues the other day. So again, the injuries for Ottawa, it's going to be Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg week-to-week. -week. Nick Holdman, Jake Sanderson week-to-week -week as well. For the Boston Bruins, again, like we said, 89 points in the season, seven ahead of Carolina for the President's Trophy pace. The only injury really to speak of for the Boston Bruins is Tomas Snowsek. He's going to be day-to-day. -day. So, John, I'm here with you. I'll be your play-by-play -play man. And then the complete game coverage will be at hopelesssportsguide.wordpress.com per usual. With the story and the play-by-play -play and all of that together. So you got your starting lineups. you got all the stats in front of you. And uh, we will see if your puck drop in a matter of mere moments. What's going on, Keith? How are you doing, my friend, on the Twitter Spaces side? So this is going to be my early assignment for the week. As we're in a commercial break, I will go ahead and uh, just bring this up for anyone that is listening, following along at some point. I'm just going to pull this up on the Facebook side if this loads. So for the week, it's going to be heavy NHL for the most part because the NBA is on a little bit of the All-Star break all the way till Thursday. So we have Ottawa and Boston today about 1. So about... 125 puck drop, maybe 120. It's usually a little bit longer now. Matt and A games, maybe they're going to take some extra time here. But for Tuesday, I'll be back to a normal time assignment. All these are Eastern, by the way, because I'm from Michigan on that side. So the LA Kings and the Minnesota Wild, that'll be at 8 p.m. on Tuesday. Wednesday will be an off day. Thursday is going to be Calgary and 
the Vegas Golden Knights with Cooper Hopkins per usual if he's available. If not, I'll flex it to Golden State and the LA Lakers because the team NBA and TNT that'll be open the first day on Thursday. So it'll be 9 p.m. for the hockey game for the Golden Knights and the Flames or 10 p.m. for Golden State and the LA Lakers. Saturday, it will be Calgary and Colorado with Cooper Hopkins if he's available because he likes to cover the Flames and all. And they have some really important games coming on this week where they play nothing but playoff teams in the next seven after Philadelphia and Ottawa. But if it's not going to be available for that, we'll do Notre Dame, Michigan, some college hockey. And then Sunday, it'll be uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, NCAA men's hoops at 2 p.m. So. Should be a good schedule this week, and I'll actually get a Sunday in, so at least five of the seven should be covered. If I miss a midweek game, it's because i got to spend time with the misses. But at least for Monday and Tuesday, we'll be all set. Maybe Wednesday will be the off day that's built in, and that'll be fine. So should be pretty busy this week. Should be good, though. I'm looking forward to it. But this is taking a little extra long, because I know usually we're about 15 minutes within puck drop. You about Usually that's how it always goes, but I think with this matinee game, there might be some extra ceremonies or something going on. So for the NHL standings right now, we can just go through it. 42-8-5 for the Boston Bruins. It's 89 points. And they're really back to being in business, Boston. They've got three dominant wins in a row here. But the Carolina Hurricanes, they won 10 of 11, 37, 10, and 8 for 82 points. So they're probably the hottest team in the NHL. It's going to be interesting because I think today it's going to be the Pittsburgh Penguins and the New York Islanders. They're going to play at least another time this week. They already did a couple days ago. Both these teams are at 63 points in the wild card. So that's going to put a situation where Somebody's not going to get points, and somebody is. You're either going to get the two and one or the two and nothing on both sides, depending on the regulation. And I thought about tomorrow's game between the Red Wings and the Caps, as that one is uh, two points apiece. I know when Cooper Hopkins and I talked about it from the very beginning, I know he said something about Boston and they're older and the roster and all that. I think a lot of people expected a little bit of a drop-off. They didn't expect something like this, so I won't blame him. And I also heard that from a lot of people, I didn't think, we knew that they were going to be a playoff team. We believe that, but not to this extent. But for my pick, it was the Washington Capitals. I didn't think we are going to make the playoffs. And right now, that seems to be the case. And they're right about it. And they were hot for uh, maybe mid-December, January. Now we've got to February. Now, especially with Ovechkin with the passing of his father, and not being there, they got destroyed in the outdoor game against Carolina, who... Let's be honest, Sorelli, they've been waiting for that for a long time. But it's it's certainly been a while since we haven't seen the Washington Capitals or the Pittsburgh Penguins in the playoffs, but they're right on the bubble part of it as we're a little about quarter way still left to go in the season. So puck drop is going to be set to get underway here. It's the Ottawa Senators and the Boston Bruins. The Sens and the Florida Panthers are the only two teams that have beaten Boston twice in the same season. As Ottawa has puck possession, they're going to dump this right to left. They're wearing the road whites with the black pants, and the Boston Bruins are in all black with the gold and yellow piping. As this gets picked up here by Stutzla, I flip down the ice. So Boston with David Krejci, wow, there was some contact, and I think there's already going to be a, a hooking at least, or maybe it was a high stick that was blown away, but that's certainly what the ref uh, signaled. I thought it was going to be a penalty right at the 1937 mark because it was Kachuk and Krejci. It got tied up, and Kachuk kind of got a stick in the face up of David Krejci right away. So that's going to tell you maybe what type of principality this game is going to take upon itself. I mean, all right, let's just be honest here. With Boston Bruins in their record of 42-8-5, you're talking about Almost a percentage in the double digits that have been lost by one team. Again, it's just two games, but a team that's 42-8-5, you want to go ahead and uh, right the ship. It's not like Boston needs to change much as far in the season. they got the best record in the NHL, but come on. So when you think about it, you have the early matinee day game, and you have Ottawa playing late last night, and then they got to play early here today, so we'll see how much energy they have in their legs. But again, this is a very young team as this goes across the B's logo. Pass across Pinto. He's going to take the wrist shot. And this one's going to get stopped by Olmark. 
So Allmark is in that they decided not to go with Jeremy Swayman because Boston had the off day the other day, and Batherson going to shoot one right on. Allmark will stop it with the left pad. With 18.45 left to go in the first, drawn under with you at TD Garden in Boston. It's a matinee game between the Bruins and the Ottawa Senators as Mandelizzi makes the save. So it's two shots to one in favor of Ottawa here early with 18.45 left to go in the first frame. So thank you for joining me today for this matinee day game, and I will take you all the way through with the game story and everything else to follow when it's all said and done. So this will be an early assignment for me, and once all this stuff gets done, I will be done for the rest of the day. So I guess I won't know what to do with myself. Maybe I'll get a chance to uh, watch something on the 7 o'clock side because there's a couple of good games on that. But I figured I was already in the mode of getting up a little bit early with a couple of plans on the weekend side. So the slap shot goes toward the left side of the paint as he's trying to get picked up. And now this could be a break opportunity here for Taylor Hall, but he's going to need some help as Larson comes back. Taylor Hall will pass this toward the right side. Dot now on the high slot. She gets settled down by Forbert. Wanting the slap shot was Taylor Hall. He's got the stick up in the air, but the puck never came to him. It's Connor Clifton gets this one to Hall. This gets deflected, and I think this might have also have been a delayed penalty upcoming against Ottawa. I did not see it myself. I just saw it go across the TSN screen. So we're watching this on ESPN+. Plus. I have the TSN feed because, as I said, in between uh, – Everything that goes on in Boston, I will not take that feed side of it. We'll live with what we live with. So I know what the common answer is going to be in the chat section when anyone actually does these votes, but I wanted to throw it out there anyway. Will the Senators make the playoffs? I'm imagining a heavy no, but again, they're only three points out right now as far as getting stuff done with some games in hand. So Martian, as this gets slap shot, this gets blocked by Mandelisi, and this will go back to Pasternak. Looking for the deflection again. He gets it right back, and it goes toward the right side of the wall. As this gets circled around by Marshawn. Ottawa trying to get this out, and they'll do. We'll flip it across the red line. I'll pull my rosters back up here as Allmark goes back and plays it. Now Charlie McAvoy with Marshawn as the Bruins try to go left to right in this first frame. Glad you could join me here for this President's Day stream on this matinee day game. It's good to be uh, covering in a... A sound between two teams I don't get the cover very often. So I figured we would just do it like this. So Boston still on the power play with Marshawn as he gains the entry. And that was a little too easy for Ottawa to clear because as soon as he lost it toward the right side of the blue line, there was just players all there to clear for Ottawa. So a minute left to go here for the Bees. They're at home right now. 17 minutes left to go in the first round. They're with them the play-by-play. Another backhanded entry here as Posternock will try to send this one all the way back. Taylor Hall waiting toward the right side of the crease as this is still in behind the net by Artem Zub. Zub will try to get this out of the zone, and they do. So Ottawa's penalty kill. It's been decent so far. You can't say that for the entire season, though. Boston's par plays at 6, about 28%. As Taylor Hall lost it, Krejci will pick it up near the right side dot. Krejci going to leave now here for Hall, more the red line. Gets back to Krejci as they go crisscross. McAvoy, now Hall. Hall with a ripper toward the upper part of the right crossbar. And that's off the glove handle of Mandelisi. Settled back down by Boston. Fake the slap shot. As he's spinning out for Krejci. Finds Hall again for another bomb. He's the left-handed shot near the left side dot. And that's what they want. Get that all set up. As Krejci, Bergeron. Krejci will hold now near the right dot. Ottawa's killed the penalty, but it's still dangerous. Mandelisi right in the left the catching glove off the one-time slap shot. That was from Hampus Lindholm. And that was solved by the Ottawa Netminder. 16.06 left to go in the first. Four shots to two now in favor of Boston. But we are scoreless almost inside the first four minutes of the first period. So Taylor Hall, it was pretty pretty clear what Boston wanted to do on their first power play was get him on the right dot for that left-handed shot and try to fire it and lift it over Mandelizzi. This is his second I think third game, actually, in the NHL. He's 1-0-0 on the season with a 9.57 save percentage. He's up 46 of 48 when he gets the Islanders on Tuesday. So he was certainly busy. Tomas Chabot off the right glove and another one. This gets saved by Linus Olmark. So the first save was good. The second save was better. And Olmark was near the left side dock when he had to make that save. He came all the way out to try to block off any kind of cross pass. Let them to shoot, and Stutz will have the second opportunity, and both of them were saved by Allmark. So both goalies pretty good so far. 
It's uh, three shots to four in favor of the Bruins at home right now. 1551 on the first. It's an offensive zone draw. This one is won momentarily by Ottawa. Shot from the point. This gets deflected, and Allmark had to almost watch it go by him near the left side of the crease. And now Pinto will try to pick this up near the left side red line as this gets collected here. Chabot will spin all the way around, and Marshawn will pick it up. As Boston quickly looks to make transition, and Bergeron will just shoot this intentionally wide so Marshawn can pick it up near the left side wall. Bees and behind the net. Great work there by Ottawa. Some of their back check as Tomas Chabot laid the body on Jake DeBrusque. DeBrusque still with it near the right side dot as he'll shoot another one wide. This gets picked up here by Hampus Lindholm. Again, Boston, there's just players all over themselves right now as Brady Kachuk will leave this here. For Chabot, Chabot gains the entry off the backhand, but everybody else was offside, so they're going to have to peel back anyway. 5-4 are the shots in favor of the Sens right now. 14-50 left to go on the first. John, I'm here with you at TD Garden in Boston for this matinee day game. Glad you can join me. So this is behind the net for Connor Clifton. Boston will try to get this going again as they gain entry across the red line. Hall with a series of stick handles with a windmill and a backhand. As this is flipped in around the end board. See if Ottawa can get to this first. Parker Kelly tries to cut off the bees in front of the puck. Taylor Hall can't find it and wants to skate. So he got all turned around, which allowed Zub to go ahead and clear this one out for Ottawa. Travis Hamannick tries to get there now as Old Mark will play it. And here comes Charlie Coyle as he gets across the red line. I'll flip this in off the wrist shot. And now Artem Zub back in behind the net of Kevin Mendelisi. Zub. Has it now near the right side dot as they're going to lose a stick in the middle of the slot, the high slot in Ottawa's defensive end. So keep in mind that that's there. And again, it's interfering with the live ad, so it kind of looks like it's blending into the ice. So you always got to watch that when you're doing some of the play-by-plays. Tomas Trubot will surround this around the end boards. Olmark will go ahead and play it. Whoops, it past the referee. This stays in, and the slot shot from Zub goes off the left pad. And now Trubot. We'll pinch in deep as this is near the left side of the red line with Jake Batherson. Off the backhand now, Pinto. Batherson has it in behind the net, but he was canceled off by a pair of bees. Trying to set this up for it near the right side dot, and that was good defense by Boston as they canceled off an in close one time. David Posternock watches this go around the end boards, and now Mandelizzi will play it. He's just going to leave it here for the defense, but it's busy. Now, Posternock has it near the right side dot. He was looking for a centering pass in the middle of the left side of the crease. As this will go on the left side wall at the wrist shot, Pasternak off the forehand. Got to watch out for him, and he can't get caught daydreaming as the deflection goes wide to the right side. Chris Quell tries to put it in the middle of the paint, and Ottawa and Debrinka will just flip this one down. They'll bank it full style off the boards. Boston has this in their own end. It's been a good contest so far. We've got some pretty good shots. Both of these goalies have been pretty decent as well. As this one goes offside, maybe up on the players' bench as well. Six shots to four in favor of Ottawa. We're going to go to a commercial break. 12.46 left to go on the first. We are scoreless between Ottawa and Boston. Did you know that in one year there were more than 22,000 skiing related crashes in Michigan? Did you know that were Appreciate you guys bouncing in and out between this matinee day game. I didn't think we'd get anybody here on this early side. So used to be covering a lot of these night games. So maybe you can get everything done by uh, 6 p.m. Eastern for myself and then get a chance to get a normal dinner and all that, too, once it's all done. So I won't say that I mind. We all have a part to play in this game. Because now is the time. Week 2 of the XFL kicks off Thursday on FX. Continues on FX Saturday. And wraps up Sunday on ESPN and ESPN2. We do have one score. We have one other 1 o'clock game that's going on right now. I think it's Florida and the Ducks. If I saw that correctly. So it's one nothing Ducks on the Florida Panthers. They certainly cannot drop that game. This one is at FLA Live Arena. It's on NHL Network only. So you can't get that one on ESPN Plus on that side whenever that hits that direction for NHL Network. 
3 left to go in the first on that game, 12.46 left to go in our game. So our game was a little bit delayed as far as a couple extra ceremonies that they didn't show on the TSN side, which I would have liked to have seen. So they're about four minutes ahead of us. So there's Sean Matthew, Joseph, Tomas Chabot, and Julian Gauthier in the St. John, John's Sea Dogs in 2018 when they won the title. Julian Gauthier is going to get a chance to play today here as we're trying to go ahead and get this feed. And then once this does come back up here, because TSN lost it, I will flip this across again. But I'm not going to subjugate everybody to the colored bars. So one nothing between Anaheim and Florida as I'm waiting for the feed to come back on that side. It was Mason McTavish's 13th on the season from Dmitry Kulkov and Max Jones. And that was at 11.46. And I'm just trying to kill some time here before they actually get their feed back here. Sergey Bobrovsky is in net. And John Gibson is in net right now for the Anaheim Ducks. So now we are back with the feed. So it corrected itself on ESPN Plus. This is the TSN feed that's being carried here today. It's eight shots to four in favor of the Sens. We're scoreless about 12 or 5 off the goal on the first. So then this is in the defensive end of the Bs as they'll collect it now. Connor Clifton will take his time. He's going to try to work around the back end and go around the end boards to his defensive partner. And they'll pick this back up here for the Bruins lineup. As this gets flipped in, it's Marshawn couldn't get to it. Now Chabot will watch this one go back into the Bruins' defensive zone. So it's Derek Forbert and Connor Clifton right now on the defensive side. As Clifton will gain the entry. And Tomas Chabot now back here for Zub as this is picked up near the right side dot. Now off the forehand, this will go back to Chabot. And Mandelisi will take a look as he's holding on to the right side post as been a pretty good game so far between these two. Again, Ottawa has beaten Boston twice, and only the Florida Panthers can say that on the other end. And Boston only has eight regulation losses. As Claude Giroux will get this dump in, this actually goes off the left pad of Linus Olmark. And now, Brady Kachuk will try to keep this near the left side of the faceoff dot. Paul lost it. Kachuk trying to jam this one down in the left side of the post. Hampus Lindholm forces off his helmet. And we get some pushing and shoving there as Gauthier is in there for Ottawa as well to defend with Lindholm, Carlo, and Charlie Coyle with 11 minutes left to go on the first. Getting a chance to look at uh, someone's camera phone in the stands. They have an unfortunate picture of some young lady with the photo bomb. So whoever got that on the TSN side is uh, doing pretty good. <laughs> As far as the cameraman, give him a raise as we get a little bit of a stoppage with 11.01. We'll become the first offensive zone draw coming. Shane Pinto is going to go ahead and take this one, but it's a defensive zone win for the Bees as they're in their alternate that has the B out in the front. It doesn't have the bear on it, which it says, we look like twos, but we play like tens. That's the ultimate quote there from uh, Brad Marchand when you have the Bears logo on it. So this is going to be a tripping penalty against the Boston Bruins. That'll be the first power play for the Ottawa Senators upcoming. I'll get a chance to take a look at what the call is going to be on and what's going forward here. So Ottawa's going to go to the power play. It's going to be Craig Smith for tripping Artem Zub at the 916 marker of the first. So Ottawa's pretty good on the power play. What I do notice from a couple times that we have covered them in the sense that there's a lot of shots in between the left or right dot for either Batherson or Debrinkit. So right now it's Kachuk, Batherson, Stutzla, and Shabbat, and Debrinkit on the ice as they go for the four forwards, 1D, like most power play lines do. And now this will be Shabbat. We'll thank it here for Stutzla. Stutzla tried to get the wrist shot off, but he's going to stay with it now. Kachuk will get this one out. And we'll see now. This is two. This is another penalty against the Boston Bruins. I didn't even see what the second one was on, so... A five-on-three advantage, a two-man advantage upcoming here for Ottawa with 10.33 left to go in the first and a chorus of boos here at TD Garden. And uh, Jim Montgomery is just saying that's HS if you want to think about the uh, curse words as far as that was concerned. I didn't see it, to be honest with you. And I'm trying to do my best. It was a hooking call against Bergeron, and that must have flashed very quickly across the screen. So a two-man advantage here for the Sens. So Stutzla 
gets this off the stick lift. And now we'll have to do this off the unfair drop, apparently. So this will have to start one more time. And now Ottawa wouldn't be happy about that because they just want to clean off the stick lift. Claude Giroux will get set to take the draw now. So Claude Giroux tries to get this off the skate blade of Kachuk, but this actually goes the wrong way. So Ottawa kind of got messed up there. So even on the road, Ottawa's power play is 26%, which is second best in the NHL. They have a lot of firepower one-timers that they can use to enlist on. They're really good on the power plays. It's just about even strength could shut. And now Debrinkin able to walk in off the backhand. And that was saved with the left stick of Walmart. And again, this is a two-man advantage here for Ottawa. So we'll see if Boston can kill some time. they got a minute 15 left to go with this two-man advantage. Drake Fathers will pick this up near the left side red line. Gain the entry off the cross pass. Now it's about getting some chances. Touch pass. Stutzel off the back end, trying to play in between the legs here for Batherson. And now Coyle will get it. We'll flip this one down the ice. So minute three left to go in the two-man advantage, and we get another inverted whistle. I guess there was an offside there, but how is it offside in the defensive end? We're seeing some crazy calls right now. Are we going to get offsetting penalties? For slashing, apparently. Again, these cameras need to show this for me so I can relay this to you. Again, I'm not going to try to throw myself under the bus when I can't see it all. As this is picked up here, Quell's got it. And where's the slash? Are they calling this 25 seconds later? This is in college hockey. <laughs> There's a slash for Lindholm, and it looks like um, Claude Giroux. That was after the play. So that was all the way down the other end of the ice. That's why I didn't see it. So still a two-man advantage, but the box is going to be crowded. This will get picked up here. Shabbat will settle it down. And Ottawa, now for Batherson in the high slot. It's the brink of the cross pass for Brady Kachuk. Stutzla now. Stutzla, with, as this will go back between Stutzla. He's got it near the right dot. Now he'll work his way in the high slot. Now the brink it. Shabbat, Stutzla, they'll play crisscross. They're in between the circles all the way across. Between the right and the middle, they're playing a little bit of a triangle shape as this is a long outstretch pass by Mandelizzi. And now Stutzla, still stick handling like a magician. He's definitely got the speed. This is in the high slot now. This is a settle down for Kachuk. The brink it, going to let the slap shot go. This gets flipped up in the air and cleared down. So... Ottawa's power play on the two-man advantage did not look good. There was a lot of passing, but Boston's going to go ahead and take that. Now it's just five seconds left to go with the single man left on the ice. As Chabot will try to leave this here. As Shane Pinto, Ridley Gray, shoot it in the high slot as Matthew Joseph. And Boston has killed the two-man advantage. And there was a lot of window dressing there for Ottawa as the crowd rises to their feet and claps their hands. Again, there wasn't much going on for Ottawa there. Nine shots to four. We're still scoreless with 8.30 in the first. Did you know that the risk of a crash increases with every mile per hour over the speed limit? Did you know that in one year there were more than 2,000 speeding related crashes in Michigan, and 200 people died. Did you know that most speeding tickets in Michigan cost over $100? You know it now, so slow it down. All right, bring it in. Does it matter whether you're a player, a fan, a coach, or an entire city? We all have a part to play in this game. This is your moment to show up, to show up, so come with that hunger, because now is the time. Week 2 of the XFL kicks off Thursday on FX, continues on FX Saturday, and wraps up Sunday on ESPN and ESPN2. We all have a part to play in this game. Because now is the time. Week 2 of the XFL <clears throat> kicks off Thursday on FX, continues on FX Saturday. And wraps up Sunday on ESPN and ESPN2. And here comes Jalen Brown. Damn. Good ball, big. One more. Damn. Oh, he caught it. One second. Yes. 
seven to five win by the Senators. Seven different Ottawa players scored that game. It was Boston's first loss. So in October 18th, when it was a seven five win, they're showing this on the uh, TSN side. It was seven different goal scores for Ottawa in that 7-5 win, and then they won 3-2 in the shootout in the next game against when they played Boston. They did not score on the two-man advantage, though. So, 8-30, you'll have to go in the first drawn under with you. we got the TSN feed. We're in the TD Garden in Boston. It's a matinee day game between the Ottawa Senators and the Boston Bruins. As Ridley Grieg can't win the faceoff, and Ottawa certainly struggled at that point so far. As this is dumped in, Boston will try to get some puck possession. They haven't had a lot of that, but again, it was because of a two-man advantage there for the Ottawa Senators. They did not score. 23-2-3 and three is Boston's record at TD Garden. Well, they don't five up in the first. As there was a huge hit delivered, and I think there's going to be a penalty call. There was Gauthier that put one of the Boston Bruins on their heavily padded wallet. Oh, he got absolutely smoked as it was cleared in. 806, and that was Pasta that got his bell rung. My goodness, you don't see that very often as he's wearing a silver chain as well. He's checking his chicklets. Hopefully, you get a chance to go out and look at that. I think it was Tomas Chabot, the heavy artillery. So, a penalty is going to be called, and this is for interference. So, Chabot indeed will go to the box, but man, he certainly sent the message there. He got a left forearm up high into the mouth of David Posternock as he was kind of shaking out that left hand, making sure everything else was good. And one of the bees just came over and tried to say, hey, how are you doing? Because that was a little bit of a high hit, a dangerous one on the Boston Star, and the one that subjugated most of the damage here for the Bruins. Although you can also, if you want to make the remark of the Bruins being the Seattle Kraken of the East as far as rolling out all four lines and getting points, you'd be absolutely correct. Oster knocks about 30 ahead on everybody. So McAvoy off the one-timer, the pass across, and that was saved there by Mandelizzi. Now McAvoy will take this time with Brad Marshaw. McAvoy going to let the bomb go, and this goes near the left post as this will get flipped back there on the ice here by Ottawa. So 7.45 as Austin Watson got a piece of it before he went to the bench. This is McAvoy trying to gain the entry now off the backhand. We'll get set up here around the teammates, and now it's Marshawn. Try to drop this here for Bergeron, McAvoy. Get it across, Marshawn with a centering feed. And now this will get cleared down the ice by Pinto off the slap pass. So this will go all the way now to Linus Olmark. 7.20 left to go in the first, a minute 15 left to go. Boston's power play in this day game. It's nothing, nothing. Nine shots to four. Boston got this near the right dot. Having to spin around is Jake DeBrusque as he's stuck now near the boards. Trying to work in behind the office. That was a good setup for Pasternak. And what a save by Mandelizzi. As now this goes to Charlie McAvoy. Pasta, his pass. Marshawn, this can't be lifted over Mandelizzi. This is stopped by the left glove. Now this stays with the bees. Marshawn, patient, working his way in the high slot. Now toward the right dot. Keeps alive off the forehand. Now spins towards the right wall. As now it's Pasta. Pasta, he'll flip it. This one goes wide. Zub trying to get a stick lift. Get back down the ice as there's some serious body contact going on the other right boards. Charlie McAvoy as that knocked down Jake DeBrux, but he gets back up now. He's on the right wall, though he just got punished. Try to drop this one back here for Brad Marchand. Marchand try to get this to DeBrus, but that was a hopeful pass as this gets flipped up in there off a the stick. So Matthew Joseph, this will stay in the Ottawa defensive zone. Boston's power play looked pretty good. So even on the two-man advantage when Ottawa had a lot of Puck possession, there was a lot of window dressing, not a lot of shots to Felinus Olmark. On the Boston power play, that looked a lot more pretty much definitive of what they wanted to do. Amanda Lisi had to make at least three really good stops in that sequence, two of them on the right pad and one toward the left stick side as Pasternak got close to getting open in the middle of the slot. That was the most dangerous chance of all. So Krejci going to go ahead and take this face up as the second power play line is out there for Jim Montgomery's squad. See if this is going to be a shorthanded opportunity here for Ottawa. Try to play this off the backhand, and it's saved by Olmark. That was Claude Giroux. He got the uh, faceoff win off the pickup. He just drove the net down the left side of the wall, put the backhand on, and Olmark came all the way out to meet him. Olmark likes to go ahead, what I will say right now, going to get a chance to watch him, is he will cut you off and cut those angles. So maybe you might want to think about busting a wrist shot sometimes, try to see if you can catch him napping. 
trying to lift something over his shoulder. That's what it certainly looks like. So Claude Giroux going to get set to take the draw again, this time on the offensive end. Boston Bruins got nine seconds left to go on their power play. So another faceoff win here for the Beast. They'll settle it down. Their power play is going to effectively be over as Hampus Lindholm gained the red line and on dumping near the right side of the wall. Taylor Hall will get a chance to get to it first as Brandon Carlo will hold it in. And now Ottawa will play this one to a knee, try to get this across the red line. It was a hopeful pass. they got to make sure on the other side that Ottawa doesn't turn this over in a bad spot as Austin Watson lost this off the flip. It was good defense by Hampus Lindholm to put a stick in the way and Boston's iced the puck. So their line's going to they have to stay out there. They can't make changes once you ice it. 5.43 left to go in the first. John, are you with you? Watching the TSN Vive feed, apparently, on ESPN+. Plus. There's a lot of different feeds. There's a lot of Canadian hockey markets. We get that. It's 10 shots to 6 in favor of Ottawa. It should be that way because they spent the majority of the time in a two-man advantage, at least. But they didn't get anything going. Boston got about four shots on their power play. And then a lot going on in the even strengths. So even though they've had the day off and Ottawa's played the back to back, they seem to have had the flusher legs right now. This Watson will go all the way back to go ahead and play it. Charlie Quell will pick it up now near the right side wall as this almost went expertly D to D, even around a couple of Ottawa stick handles. Played off the forehand as Gambrell will try to get there. Now about the Chabot and Drake Batherson. As Lena Solmark will just slap past this thing around the end boards with the goal stick, but now Chabot will gain the entry off the red line. We'll flip it in. This will actually be gloved by Olmark. He can't take any chances or play it because there's Ottawa Senators right in his face. 505 left to go in the first. 11 shots to six in favor of Ottawa. We're scoreless. So now, goofballing, you can ask this stuff on the YouTube side about showing the TV. If I show the TV, it's demonetized, and I can't end up, end up doing any of these. So anytime we call these games, if I show that immediately, you'll never have anyone be able to call it. You can follow along on all the other streams if you like, because I'm sure there are they're available for you. But uh, it won't be long before they're taken down, my friend. So I can at least give you the play-by-play -play and let you know what's going on. I'll take you around the league when we get uh, a little closer, although we only have one game that's going on right now because this is the matinee day game. But the one and 20 start has been a little bit of a delay. We had some other stuff going on at TD Garden. <clears throat> So Stutzluck getting set to take the draw here for Ottawa. We said they can actually win one clean, and no, they can't. Boston, I don't get this again. They're absolutely dominating on the importance of the draws, whether you're in the defensive zone or the offensive zone. Maybe the neutral zone doesn't matter as much. As Hampus let off a couple of shots, and now he lifts and scores with the help of Jake DeBrusque. So Lindholm put DeBrusque right on the doorstep. He got his first shot stopped by Mandelisi as Mikita Zaitsev got beat. And the second one gets lifted by Jake DeBrusque in tight. And it's a 1-0 lead for the Boston Bruins. DeBrusque tried to play to the right side wall. He left it there for Lindholm. And then DeBrusque, he would just work his way near the right side wall all the way to the dot. He never worked Never stopped moving off of the crisscross pass. Chabot tried to actually get a couple whacks in there as well. 
but it didn't matter. They couldn't take the brusk off the puck. I'm not going to blame Mandelizzi on that one. He made a couple great saves in tight, but it was DeBrusk with a second opportunity, a third opportunity with the help of Brad Marchand and Hampus Lindholm. So DeBrusk scores the first goal of the game with 440 left to go on the first. 28-0-3 are the Boston Bruins when scoring first. They've not lost in regulation this season. So they're trying to get their first win against Ottawa, and I know that's a shocker to say when it's 42-8-5 on the season, but that is the case. Is Jake DeBrusk with his 18. This was flipped higher on the inboards, and now this is misplayed. This is going to give Boston an opportunity to get some puck possession. As this will pick back up here for Connor Clifton to the right side of the blue line. Boston will spin around with Trent Frederick. He's canceled off the puck there by Chabot. Now spun around the left side of the faceoff dot as this goes back to the Boston Bruins one more time. As Frederick throws the body. Boston stays on this. They'll flip her on the inboards one more time and keep this in the zone. Boston pick it up now near the right side dot. Left it there for Pavel Zaka. He just missed the right side of the crossbar. 340 left to go in the first. I will say that Ottawa has played a pretty good first period, but they're going to rue the day that they didn't score on the two-man advantage as this gets intercepted across neutral zone. Dumped down the ice there. Charlie Quell got a piece of Matthew Joseph. A little too much. That's a trip. 333 left to go in the first. Boston back to the penalty box for the tripping side of it. And we'll see if Ottawa can make something happen. It looked like Charlie Coyle, but I see David Krejci being looked at right now. So Matthew Joseph on the left side. That was Krejci that got a piece of that. So he's going to go to the box. Show Jake DeBrusque. They're showing this on the TSN side about uh, his last couple of games. So since January 2nd, this was his first game since that time. He had a goal assist against the Islanders. He's already got a goal right now. As the offensive zone win by the Ottawa Senators, that was time one. Now Stutzlow with a slap pass up for Gashuk. He missed the right side of the bar. It stayed out. That was an actual great design off the slap pass, and it connected. But now a short end opportunity for Bergeron. And that was sticked away by Ottawa. Missing the right side of the post, Ottawa was that close to tying it. And now Marshawn. Keeping this alive off the backhand, trying to get around a pair of sends. And now this will go back here by Shabbat as he's wearing the assistance captains. A and Stutzla will try to gain the entry one on four. He does so off the backhand, but he's going to need reinforcements. Can they hold the blue line? Shabbat came all the way back to do it. Stutzla. Now Brady Kachuk. Now for Shabbat. Shabbat now in the high slot near the left part of the blue line as this goes back now to Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka. Charlie at Quill with Saka now. Quill will spin near the right faceoff dot. Now he's going to ride in behind the net of Kevin Mandelisi. This is intercepted by Alex Debrinkin trying to play a centering pass. And now we'll see what happens here with Kachuk. This is another stick on the ice, but this one will be cleared by the Zebra. So 45 seconds left to go in Ottawa's power play. 12-8 are the shots. 2-15 left to go in the first. John here with you on the play-by-play -play side. Watch on TSN and ESPN+. Plus. Shane Pinto. Trying to send this around the inboards. This is canceled off on the left side of the red line here by the Bees. Bergeron trying to get out there as well. Frederick, I see him out there. As this goes all the way down to Drake Batherson. So this will be cleared by Boston. 20 seconds left to go. And I always power play is Eric Branstrom. We'll get this now from Kevin Mandelisi. As they'll try to go right to left. In this rest of this first period, about a minute 45 left to do so. As this gets flipped off the stick, cleared by Olmark. And now five seconds left to go on Ottawa's power play. They're going to start again from the defensive zone off the drop pass. They do not score again, but they'll see if they can get something going. No shots, technically, because the one went off the post there for Brady Kachuk. As there was a reverse hit on the other end, Brad Marchand nicely off the backhand. Trying to set up your Bergeron in the high slot. The shot goes just wide here for Boston. Now Connor Clifton keeps the entry. Nice move. Hampus Lindholm, his hat. Bid opportunity goes off the right pad of Mandelizzi and now picked up by Marshawn. He's looking for a cross pass and trying to set this up for David Posternock. Posternock looking for a deflection and this goes into the bread basket of Mandelizzi. He'll hold on with a minute three left to go on the first. 12 shots to nine now. Boston, the first goal of the game from Jake DeBrus. And Ottawa's had some power plays. They've had about four of them. They had a two man advantage as well. They've not scored. Just looking at the previous play as Batherson tried to set up Kachuk. He rang it off the right side of the pipe 
and then a shorthanded two on one that was broken up nicely by Shabbat as it was Marshawn and Bergeron on the shorthanded chance. So David Krejci with an offensive zone draw. He gets this one here for the Bees as we're under a minute left to go in the first frame. It's a 1-0 lead for Boston. We're at the TD Garden today. 4-1-0 in the last five games for Boston. 7-1-1 in the last nine for Ottawa. Both of these teams have been hot. The Brinket in the middle of the circles. That got blocked there by the Bees as the Drizzies and Bill Ack will pick it up now as Matt Grizzlick will overskate. Ottawa will gain the entry. As Allmark will watch this go around the end boards, Charlie McAvoy going to leave this here for Brandon Carlo, but this gets intercepted. Put it into the circles off the back end and scores! Claude Giroux ties the game at once. So Ottawa, they probably should have been on the board, and now they finally get on the board. That was some curious play in behind the net. Charlie McAvoy and I think Matt Grizzlick, they weren't clear about what they wanted to do to get the puck out of the zone. Matt Grizzlick got stick lifted, and Claude Giroux, great work as he powered his way off the backhand. He got some serious heat on it. As he let it go, he was led right into the middle of the slot as it beat Allmark. And Ottawa has tied this game at one with a goal with 30 seconds left to go. So those are the ones that you got to get toward the end of the period to carry that momentum into the dressing room. At least now it's back to even if you're a Sens fan. And now Artem Zub, spin this around. He's got knocked out of the air a couple times by Boston. As Gambrell got the assist as he set up Drew. And now 14 seconds left to go in the first. So Boston's got time for one more rush. You're going to have to pay a Lindholm pass. Great moves there by... Charlie Coyle as he gains the line. Now down to three seconds. Got a fire one short side. Stop by Mandelisi. He'll just hold with .4. They're not going to let him hold the whole time. They're going to have to take another face off here. But effectively, at the end of one, it's going to be 1-1. One, one. So when we do come back into the play-by-play, -play, I will bring in the second. I'll bring in the third. We'll get this all the way across. And we'll get you the game store at helplessportsguide.wordpress.com alongside with the play-by-play. -play. So we will chat in a little bit.
one one after 20 minutes of action in boston and thanks to claude Giroux with the late equalizer his 23rd of the year here he is the court <laughs> So another good period for Ottawa. It has been a good year so far against the Boston Bruins. Yeah, it's a very good uh, hockey team over there, uh, especially here in the Garden. They uh, they play a hard game, but uh, you know for us, yeah, it's a great test for us. Uh, I feel like we played pretty good in the first, but uh, if we want to win this game, we're going to have to be uh, a little bit better. When you look at this team's confidence level the last couple of weeks, what do you see? Yeah, obviously when you win some hockey games, you get results. You have confidence in what you do as a, as a team, a system, and trust your teammates. So, uh, you know, for us, it's about uh, just go uh, one game at a time here. And, uh, you know, uh, we've been playing some pretty good hockey lately, so uh, the confidence is pretty good. Thanks, Bob. Thanks. Hey, welcome back inside. Studio Lindsay Hamilton alongside Frankie Corrado. So, Closure Room making this one interesting, scoring 30 seconds into the end of the first period to equalize this game up. And Frankie, this is the kind of momentum the team was looking for coming off of that big 72 win over the Blues, and they carried into this one against the lead best Boston Bruins. For sure. It was a really good period for the Ottawa Senators, and they deserve to be rewarded after that first period, especially with the travel going into Boston. But this goal doesn't happen unless Dylan Gambrell does what he does here. He stays in on the court check. You see all his line mates go for a change, but he decides to pursue the puck, and there's times where coaches will tell you one guy he needs to stay on the ice and pursue the puck. We can't have everyone go on for a line change. And with that done, he just puts the Boston Bruins under enough pressure, and he's able to retrieve that puck and get it to Paul Drew, who's able to bury it. So you see that, you know, the, the lines kind of working together there, Lindsay, and how, you know, a fourth line can lead into a first line. And you always talk about players lowering the lineup. Those are setup lines, right? They, they try and set you up to get your top guys onto the ice and produce. That's exactly what happens there. It's an excellent job by Dylan Gambrell and the finish by Paul Drew. Now, of course, providing the just getting a couple notes typed in for the first period here for the game story. So, apologize for anyone that's kind of following along on that side here and me type away. So, let me give you some setups here as far as we got from the first intermission. So, 1509, Jake DeBrusque scored the first goal of the game at 1509. He scores off the setup for Marshawn. So, DeBrusque was able to drive the right side of the wall, and then Marshawn worked. Got the puck in behind the net as DeBrus continued to work toward the dot. Skating in this kind of way off the back end gets blocker to side by Mandelisi one time, but able to get his rebound in tight and lift it over the left shoulder off the wrist shot in the second opportunity to give Boston a one nothing lead. At the 1930 mark, it was Matt Grizzlick and Charlie McAvoy. They played sloppy near their own end and behind the net on the right dot. The defensive side of it, Dylan Gambrell actually was able to get a steal. He found Claude Drew in the middle of the slot to set him up with a power backhand. Alina Solmar couldn't save. It was just an all-around really bad play. Ottawa was 0 for 3 on the power play in that period. They couldn't score on the two-man advantage as Batherson set up Kachuk, but it went off the right crossbar. Boston was 0 for 2 on the power play. They had four shots in their first opportunity. They looked pretty good as Mandelisi made a couple good stops. It was 13 to 10 shots on goal in favor of Ottawa. 12-7 hits for Ottawa. 11-11 the faceoffs across the board, but timely wins by Boston outside of the neutral zone. So meaning when they got in the offensive end or the defensive end, they won those draws and started the puck possession. So that's the first period look ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, goals typed in as far as the box score, and I'll take you on the league, although we only got one other game going on right now because it was, it was the one twenty start. There was another game going on between the Ducks and the Panthers, and I'll let you know how I brought that one in a minute. Everything they can to slow down the lead best Boston Bruins. And the Bruins are 28-0-3 when scoring first, but right now we've got ourselves a tie game of 1-1 after 20. Thanks to Claude Giroux. All right, coming back to the break, hit the sixth. Will remain radioactive for years to come. Well, thank goodness, it's time for the good news of the week. Oh, yeah, they hate it. <laughs> well, this safe driver saves money with the Snapshot app from Progressive. And how do you feel? Um, good. He's better than good. He got rewarded for driving safe and driving less. Sidebar, just to confirm, this is the feel good news of the week. This is what we found. Yay, Snapshot! 
The network has gone kaput. Uh, you try to say back on it. I got what I paid for. If you weren't so smart. Well, there is a smart way to say it. So officially, your goal scoring set up again, 1509. It was Jake DeBrusque, his 18th of the year from Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy, respectively, 32 and 33 apples on the season. And at the 1930 mark, it was Claude Giroux, again, off the steal from Dylan Gambrell. It was his first assist of the year from Giroux's 23rd off the power backhand. Lena Sol Marcus stopped 12 out of 13. Kevin Mandelisi stopped 9 out of 10. Both goalies, I think, have been pretty good there in that first period. And we'll see what the rest of it brings. So we're in the second period right now between Anaheim and Florida. And it seems like Florida has just scored. I'm going to go ahead and see how much time is left in our game. We can take a live look at the mutual network side. Depending on how much time is left in this intermission. Also going to have to charge my phone on the Twitter spaces side. So about 8.19 left to go in the first, thereabouts. So we can take a little live look in here for a couple minutes. I can find this back on the ESPN Plus side. Speak of flip over to NHL Network if you guys want for a couple minutes here. So it's 2-1 in favor of the Anaheim Ducks. Again, that would be a monumental loss for Florida. I think I'm not even being uh, hyperbolic when I say this. You got to get both points. You can't get one if you're Florida right now. You don't have games in hand. This is a team that you got to beat. Anaheim, and eh, maybe they're playing a little better of late, but they're still last in the Western Conference there on that side, alongside with the Chicago Blackhawks. So you really have to get those points. So I'm going to flip this on NHL Network for a couple of moments, and then I'll go ahead and uh, get the phone plugged in. Because, again, we've got to go on the TV side for this because NHL Network games are not on here. Plus. <clears throat> so they are carrying the uh, FLA Live Arena feed in Valley Sports. Mundell takes all the way back. Here's Tudis. Mundell, lead pass stolen away. Try that stretch pass. Reinhardt will shoot it. So plug in the phone. I probably won't have to do it to the second period. Let's get the cord ready on that side. I was going to worry about tech. So it's 15 shots to 9 in favor of the Panthers. We get a live look in. Our game's at 1 1 between Ottawa and Boston. So we are in the middle of an intermission. Let me tell you about those goals that were scored. So, again, it's John Gibson in that for Anaheim, as you would expect. They're 17, 33, and 6 on the season. I don't think Pat Verbeek, he knew he was going to rebuild, but not going to be this bad. He stopped 14 out of 15 for a 9.33. Sergey Bobrovsky, Big Bob, stopped 7 out of 9, 7.78. Got to improve that one a little bit. So, in the first period, it was all ducks. Mason McTavish from Kulikov and Max Jones. Frank Petrano, the rifle on the power plug from Kevin Shattenkirk. Almost forgot he was on this team with John Klingberg. It's a former single blow Kevin Shattenkirk. Dallas star John Klingberg. They picked up off the one-year deal. Tried to flip. Maybe they still will. Eric Stahl for Marco Gudis at 212 for the Panthers. Made it a 2-1 game. Jack Hughes is back for the New Jersey Devils. So at some point, I think I'm going to have to go back and uh, cover a Devils game. It's been a little while. Rivalry Series USA and Canada at 7. I wonder what the heck that's about. I wonder if that's uh, just USA hockey side. I'll have to go ahead and check and see what that is in the initial network. I don't know if that's a game or a show. <clears throat> Again, I apologize. I can't show the TV side because I know that was asked in the comment section. But if I do that, I get immediately demonetized. Not that I'm monetized anyway, but I'll never be able to do this on this channel. So I'm going to keep everything uh, even keel as much as possible. I'll just give you the play by play here to give you some live look ins when I can. So it'll be an earlier seminar for me today, and then we'll be back to business about uh, 8 15 p.m. Eastern tomorrow between Minnesota. And the LA Kings. Minnesota needs to continue to win games in regulation if they want to stay in the Western Conference playoff hunt. No doubt about that. LA Kings will look good of late. 
And are the LA Kings going to make the move for some defensive sides for Jacob Chikrin? That's what they say. We don't know yet. Eric Carlson, the same thing. Eric Carlson with his $10 million cap hit, I think that's going to require some teams to get creative. Kind of like how Toronto and Minnesota had to get creative to help uh, Ryan O'Reilly go to the Toronto Maple Leafs because not only did St. Louis have to take 50% of that cap hit, they also had to have Ryan O'Reilly go to the Minnesota Wild to be a kind of a cap circumvention, if you will. They took 25%. They got a fourth-round pick out of it from a couple of years. And then at the same time, Toronto has to take 25% of that cap hit. Ryan O'Reilly now at this point is probably a third or fourth liner. But I think it's something for Toronto for – it's something in behind the ears, right? You know about the – Playoff streaks, not being able to get a series since 2004. We've heard about that ad nauseum. So that's what Ryan O'Reilly is going to be able to do in the playoffs. He's going to get you a key draw. He's going to be able to play those minutes. He's going to be that leader in the locker room that knows what it's, what it's like to be a Stanley Cup champion. That's the hope, at least. I think that's why you make a trade like that. It was a lot for Toronto to actually give up. But if they win, it doesn't mean a damn thing, right? That's, that's what it's all about. That's what Kyle Dubas was talking about. I kind of wonder, though, for any Maple Leafs fans that are out there, how long is Kyle Dubas keeping his job? Because I think he did a great job as far as getting all that supreme offensive talent all together. But if you don't produce results in Toronto, you don't get that long leash. That's just the way it works when hockey's always in the news cycle. It doesn't matter what's going on in the daily events, whether it's sports or anything outside of sports. Toronto Maple Leafs rule the day. So you got to be able to show the results. So I don't think the O'Reilly move was a bad move. Does it move the needle all that much? We won't know that really until playoff time. Because in the regular season, you're not going to see it. We all have a part to play in this game. Because now is the time. Week 2 of the XFL kicks off Thursday on FX. Continues on FX Saturday. And wraps up Sunday on ESPN and ESPN2. So I think we have about five minutes left to go before we get in the second period. It's a 1-1 one, one game after one. It's been pretty good so far. For whatever reason, we can say this for certainty, the Ottawa Senators like paying the Boston Bruins. They're tied after one. They've already won the first two games. They got one more meeting because you get a line division of those. You can meet four times at most. I think that's what they're going to get. So I was hoping, to be honest with everybody, I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at the rest of the schedule for today's proceedings. There's not a lot. And the NBA is in the middle of the All-Star break. And look, we know I cover a lot of NHL and all that stuff around here, but the NBA is in the All-Star break. So when you only got five games to choose from, you got to make sure that you pick it right. You got to make sure you're picking teams that uh, sometimes you haven't covered. I mean, it could have been nice to do the Islanders and the Penguins, but again, they just played a couple days ago. Didn't want to do that one. I haven't got a chance to cover Ottawa too many times or Boston too many times, and it was interesting to get an early start. So I figured, let's just go with it. And so far, the game's been really good. What's upcoming are the Flyers and the Flames, the Kraken and the Sharks. That will both be at 4 Eastern, so I think Cooper Hopkins will probably be doubly happy because not only will his uh, favorite team in the Flames get a win, I would imagine, but again, you can't count it from everything else that we talked about. We do think you'd have to. And the Kraken and the Sharks, his hometown team, Seattle, I think they'll get the win as well. 
Jets and Rangers are at seven, and the Islanders and the Penguins are at seven. Jets and Rangers probably something I'll keep an eye on here today. That'll be my late night watching once this getting the food and all that stuff and getting the game story and everything else out. <clears throat> So I appreciate you guys following along. We're getting set here for second period action. Puck drop is underway here in the second frame. It's 13 shots to 10 in favor of the Ottawa Senators. As this gets fired on, so five on five action according to Gordon Miller on that side, which he is correct about, but it is funny to say because it was four penalties on one side and three on the other side. And uh, no power play goals out of it. So we've had some opportunities and some offsetting. So Jake DeBrasse picked this up there on the right side dot. He scored the long goal for Boston. And on the other end, it was Claude Giroux late in that first period. He had 30 seconds left off the backhand and offset. A holding call, 1927, against the Ottawa Senators that will put the bees back to the power play. I think so. See what this is going to be on here. Stutzla. He's the one that got it. Jake DeBrusk was the one that drew it. So Stutzla going in the box. One thing I noticed for Tim Stutzla, and I say this because I know I only covered Ottawa a couple times. Whenever he gets a chance to get a puck entry, it looks very Datsupian. I'm not saying the handles as far as the scoring ability and all that, but I think the effortlessness as far as getting into the zone. He's very confident. He's got good speed with that stick handle. It's very hard to dispossess off the puck when he's gaining the entry. He's going to like that. It's Kind of a game breaker at times when you can make it so easy. So now the Bruss will play this up the backhand with Bergeron. Marshawn's got it. And the high slot McAvoy with the one timer. And this one goes off the end boards. I try not to say that too loosely either when I say Datsuk in the same sentence, but the puck possessions is pretty easy as far as a lot of the games that we've covered. I try to mention that and see what things you can pick out. I think Stutzel is a pretty damn good player. So Jake DeBrusque. We'll get this up the left side of the wall as Bathurst, and we'll try to cut him off. Claude Drew out there, as well as far as the kill and everything else is concerned, as it's picked up near the left side wall again. Boston still stays in the puck possession. Stay patient as Pasta battles this out of the air. DeBrus will get this here for McAvoy. Extra pass, Marshawn. And now DeBrus off the forehand now, trying to get around Parker Kelly. Leaves it here for Marshawn. High side of the blue line toward the right, and this will be held by Manalisi. 18.25 left to go in the second. 59 seconds left to go in Boston's power play. As you get a good look at some of these pizza on the end of it. But I imagine those pizzas probably cost about $20, $25 as far as all this stuff's considered. If you're going to get any kind of sporting event. You're going to be paying some coin for any of that. Marshawn got some extra work and extra words, I would say, for the rest of everyone else on the bench to try to coordinate what they want to do on the power play. Both of these teams have not been sharp on the power play. Both of these teams have had plenty of opportunities. As uh, TD Garden's completely loaded here for this uh, matinee day game, but that's what you would expect when the team's been as hot as this is Hampus Lino. Nice up the backhand for Nick Delino. Trying to drop it back for Taylor Hall on the left side of the boards. And now Watson lost it. Now, Nikita Zaitsev can't get to it as David Krejci. Can't find it in between escape plays, but it gave enough time for Boston still to collect in the power play as Ottawa just trying to get settled. And the shot gets glove saved from a Taylor Hall opportunity near the right dot by Mandelizzi. 17.51 left to go in the second. John and I are with you. We're watching the TSN feed. This is on ESPN Plus. It was a Matt and a game. So early assignment here for me today before we get back to the usual suspects. Tomorrow about 8.15 Eastern in between. Minnesota and the LA Kings. Looking forward to that one as well. <clears throat> so it's Quan Giroux against Patrice Bergeron. And Giroux will win it as Batherson got stick lifted. This will stay with Boston now. Fake the slapper as Pasta trying to set it up now. Gets it back. Nice giving go opportunity and a good save by Mandelizzi as it gets stopped with the left pad and sent down the ice. He's been pretty good. You got to think about Mad Sogard and Mandelizzi when the injuries from Tomas Chabot or Tomas Chabot. Some of the other goaltenders, we're going to bring that up right now. And between Cam Talbot and Antoine Forsberg, excuse me, I'm thinking about the defense, but between Cam Talbot and Antoine Forsberg, both of them are hurt. So when you have Matt Sogard and Kevin Mandelisi, who's in today, they're both 21 years old. Both these goaltenders have been pretty good. 
So if you're the Ottawa Senators, at least in the back end of it, you have some elite forwards. You've got some pretty good defensemen, and you have some pretty good goaltending, it seems like, in the back end of it. So for everyone that wanted Ottawa to be good right now, they're still in the thick of things as far as the playoff race, although they're going to have to start continuing, just like the 7-1-1 and one and one Stanley Cup in the last nine, to get back into the playoff race. They're only about five points out right now. But the point is, you want them to be good right away. I think they're still going to be good right away, maybe about two or three years from now, and they'll all still be within that 20 to 24 year range, but now probably be between 23 to 26. This is a good young team. So most saves in an initial debut for Mandalizzi at 46, 2023 against Ottawa. Ken Reggett, only one with more, 48, 1983 against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Shane Pinto trying to win the defensive zone draw here against David Krejci. Now Krejci is getting kicked out of the dot. We're going to have to do this again. Now Boston is taking the advantage in the shot board. It's 14-13. Ottawa's had the whole lead of that until right now. 17 7 left the first, and now it's another offensive zone draw. And Grizzly, right in the right catching glove of Mandelisi. He's got some thick and dark eyebrows and some menacing hazel eyes as you look into that cage. Not quite Terminator-like like Andre Vasilevsky, but a little bit intimidating. As this young goaltender looks pretty good. 15 shots to 13 now. It's kind of wondering what you'd get when you got two games played for Mandelisi and a 957 save percentage. Again, not a big sample size, but there's things you can watch for as far as you're trying to listen to play by play. Thank you guys for doing that on the Twitter spaces and the YouTube side. Movement side to side, puck tracking, working through screens, all those things that you talked about. I think you've seen that right now. This is a really good Boston team. Have they played their best game? No, they have not. And Ottawa's playing off the back-to-back, -back, but are they getting good, consistent shots still on Mandelisi from time to time out of the 15 opportunities? I'd say at least seven or eight of them have been primo scoring opportunities. I think Mandelisi's been pretty good. 1640 left to go in the second. John, are you with you on the play-by-play as this goes back to Matt Grizzly? Lena Sol Markinov will hold near the right post as Boston with the transition. And this gets intercepted easily by Gauthier. Gauthier will walk in and shoot toward the right pad, and Olmark. Makes a stop. Will this stay in with the Ottawa Senators? No, it will not. And Polino will flip it in. He's going to go ahead and take a change. And Ottawa shouldn't have too much trouble getting this out of their own end as they don't off the backhand in this offside entry. It was 16-11 left to go in the second. 15-13 on the shot board now in favor of Boston. It's a 1-1 score line. So Jake DeBrusque and Claude Giroux late 1930 in the first are your goal scorers. Tomas Chabot, they're showing this in Juno Polino. Hit, he's holding on to the right hand, kind of protecting all that, so hopefully he's okay. He's got one hand on the stick, which is the left hand. The right hand, he kind of just has up toward uh, the stomach area, so hopefully Chabot's okay. We'll see how that one goes if he continues to play. As Larson got knocked down pretty hard, and Marshawn will just flip this nicely, but he flips it right to Ottawa. It's a two-on-three. And Ottawa has the two off the cross pass as Drew tried to get to it. Now the Bees will intercept this and Jake the Brust trying to play this one back there to Charlie Coyle. Now this will go back. Olmark will touch this with the goal stick. Boston will try to get this out into the right dot as Taylor Hall is just trying to get on a couple stick lifts. And now it's Marshawn with Bergeron. Bergeron with the drop pass here for Taylor Hall. Now they have this Lindholm off his forehand. Trying to center this back around to Bergeron in behind the net of Mandelisi. And now Lindholm. Try to get it back to Bergeron. Stick lift, but this is kept in. Here's a chance for Hall. He'll flip it toward the right side, Don, as the pass goes just wide. And Connor Clifton will get it back. It was one on two. Try to get this pass across, but Ottawa, no matter, they're going to take a change. Here comes Taylor Hall as he's powering his way off the forehand, trying to center it back toward the right circle. As that was fought off by Mandelis with the right pad, and it was cleared out just in time there by Artem Zub. As nobody was in front of the rebound, or could have been if it wasn't for Zoo. This is picked up across the D's logo, original six franchise in the Boston Bruins. Now, 16 shots to 14, with 14.45, we'll keep on the second. Right here with you on the play by play. Watching this on the TSN feed and ESPN Plus. Forbert, bid opportunity goes way wide toward the right side of the red line. And Clifton will try to lift it. Zaka will spin, and this will get picked up now by Shane Pinto as he tries to edge work this thing off the glass. Couple of stick hands out of the air for Drake Batherson and a shot from about 100 feet. This one goes 
just wider than the right side of the red line and now collected by the bees. They'll pick it up across the red line now into the neutral zone. Craig Smith will gain the entry and Akita Zaitsev will flip it down. See if this one will be ice now alone. Olmark will touch it here and leave it for Matt Grizzly. Grizzly now gaining the entry here for Pavel Zaka. As Boston, big hit, was almost a reverse one at that, was able to stay on his feet. That was one of the Boston Bruins. As this stays for David Krejci, fakes it off the backhand, trying to set it up here for Pasternak, put it in through the blue paint, stopped by the right pad of Mandelisi. This is still loose as uh, all of will spin. Picked up now, Zub's getting worked over in behind the net, and Nikita Zaitsev, Watson as well. This is held in by Hampus Lindholm nicely. That's why you're plus 38, my friend. He was nowhere near the puck. Now he's near the left side of the blue line. Pasternak. We'll just chip it into the left side wall. It's very busy in front of Manolisi's crease right now. Just shadow boxing these players all in front, just not giving them any space. Lindholm rides the line beautifully, works his way to the left dot, keeps it alive off the forehand. They can't take him off the puck. Now behind the net, he wraps it around. As that was saved by the stick of Mandelisi. And now Ottawa with Larson. They're going to need to take a change right now. It's Gauthier, Parker, Kelly, all those guys. They were stuck out there for a long time on the fourth line side for DJ Smith's squad. So 12.55 left to go on the second. This is right all around the end boards. Matthew Joseph lets you clear it back to his goaltender. Get it back. It's his pass. It's deflected. Connor Clifton kind of got in the way there with Austin Watson. Now Watson, Gambrell, spinning around the end boards. As this goes D to D, Tomas Trabot plays it in the left side of the blue line. And now this puck is really starting to matriculate between both these teams. And we'll see if Boston can get something going off of a short opportunity of a break out there. But Polino got canceled off. Connor Clifton gains the entry. It's all sorts of madness down here. The left side of the blue line. As Trabot will pick it back up from the goal stick of Mandelisi. So he's back out there. He was holding on to the right hand. Maybe he got uh, sticked and it kind of hurt that glove. But he's back out there right now kind of commandeering things in behind the net. As his long pass gets picked up in the neutral zone. Back by Ottawa. Now Shabbat tries to play it off the backhand. And now here's an opportunity for DeBras. Slap shot. What a back check by Watson. As he lifted the stick just before the bomb can be let go. And Mandelisi as the puck falls back. We'll hold on and we'll get media stoppage. With 11.55, we'll be going the first. It's still 1-1. This has been some good action. David Krejci got absolutely robbed with the right pad of Mandelisi on the break side. Come right back. <clears throat> Still 1-1 one, one, as we are getting close to the middle of the second period, at least half of regulation. It is Jake DeBrusque from 1509, Marco the first from Marshawn and Charlie McAvoy, and Claude Giroux is 25th of the season from Dylan Gabrell's first apple of the year in 1930. This second period gone by pretty quickly. Both teams getting some good shots back and forth, good pace to it. Hampus Lindholm made some nice plays near the left side of the blue line to skate and kind of ride that line and set some shots up. But both of these teams, I will say this for sure, got to stay out of the penalty box. This has not been a very disciplined game, but some of these elite forwards that you have, sometimes all you can do is trip. <clears throat> so Senators and Hurricanes will be Friday on TSN at 7. That's going to be another difficult matchup. Someone's trying to make some prime rib on the TSN side. That looks very good. That was at TD Garden in Boston. That's where we are right now. It's going to be a defensive zone draw upcoming here for the Ottawa Senators. We're going to see who's going to take this here. Pinto's all set to go, but we need a B here on this other side of the line. 
So David Krejci going to go ahead and get set to take this offensive zone draw. He wins this, and Pasternak got sent up immediately, and it got blocked by Ottawa. And if it wasn't for that, it probably would have went toward the right side five hole. As now to bring it, he's got full jets. He'll just gain the entry off the red line, off the wrist shot dump in. Batherson gets worked across the wall. Now with the help of Pinto. And now the Bruins try to break up, but they gain the interception. As Shane Pinto is not giving up on the play, which you got to like that. 19 hits to 12 in favor of Ottawa, but it's a 1 1 score length. Krejci and Zaka tried a little give and go play near the right side dot as this gets intercepted by Debrinket again. Will he gain the entry? No, he's going to skate this across. And now it's Chabot. He gets stick lifted. He gets it right back, though, near the right side of the wall as Debrinket still on his horse. Now near the right side of the red line. Boston will flip this down. This gets last touch, so this will not be iced. And then Delisi will leave it here for Arm Zoob. Zoob's pool like pass will go near the left side of the wall on the left side boards. Derek Forbert. Tries to get to this with a couple of stick pokes. And now this will go back into the neutral zone here for Ottawa. 10-45 left to go in the second period. John Under with you on the play-by-play. -play. Watching the TSN feed. It's a matinee President's Day stream. So I'm glad you can join me here on the U.S. side. Let's think it's family day for Canadian side. There's Taylor Hall. There's a chance for Hall. He would have been all alone. But a great back check and a dive by Artem Zoo. Probably saved a goal right there. There's a couple opportunities there. It was Pasternak. Right off the faceoff win by Krejci. And then Artem Zub with a dive right in front of Taylor Hall. He looked like he was going to be all alone. So good defense there by Ottawa. And you haven't said that too many times, especially on the even strength part of it. <laughs> no doubt about it. That's why you got the heavy minus on the other end, even though Ottawa's above the NHL 500 at 27, 24, and 4. So this will get flipped back down into the neutral zone by the Sens. And don't forget, they play without Josh Norris all year. They're going to get the Oxford Michigan native back next season. Marshan, as somebody got taken out, Claude Giroux was all over it. No penalty called there by the Zebras. The Bruins won them on Claude Giroux with another good back check. Hampus laid on, got smoked by Chabot. Centered out of the middle of the slot and laid his all bar. With a gigantic save on Brady Kachuk. Wow, what a stop. That should have absolutely been a goal. It was a thunderous hit, and it was set all the way up from Kachuk to Gambrell. And Hampus Lennell with the absolute robbery as we go to break. Gambrell and Kachuk just teamed up to just steamroll Hampus Lindholm and behind the net forced the turnover in the middle of the slot. And Linus Olmark just made his best save of the game as we went to break. That was worth going up a couple of octaves. You're going to see that one if you follow in NHL highlights tonight as you're perusing Linus Olmark making that save there with the team up of – Gambrell and Kachuk, that was spectacular. Best in the game so far. For as good as I say that Kevin Mandelisi has been, he's been no slouch. Lena Solmark just made the best save of the game. So, again, we don't have any other scores to talk about until we get to the 4 p.m. side of it, but this game will probably be over by then. It's 16 out of 17 for Mandelisi. It's 14 out of 15 for Linus Olmark. With the 9 of 37 left to go in the second. 410 left to go in the second in between Anaheim and Florida. So by the time the second period ends, we'll go ahead and take that bathroom break. And then probably get a live look in between Anaheim and Florida. Florida needs these two points. Anaheim, you know, you know where they're gonna be as far as the standings are concerned. But Florida's down 2-1. They're at FLA Live Arena right now. Big Bob's in net. For the Panthers, on the other end, it's John Gibson. What's going on, Ali? How you doing, my friend? On Twitter Spaces side, we're in the middle of a commercial break. We've got about 9.37 left to go in the second. So Gambrell and Kachuk, as we come back from the break, as we talked about, that was a perfect save by Hampus Lindholm. Hampus Lindholm absolutely got bodied in behind the net. It was centered out in front of the slot for Gambrell, and that was an incredible stop by Olmark. 
as the brinket tries to get around fully now. And the bees will pick this up. They're going to go right to left in the rest of the second period here. They are at home right now at TD Garden in Boston under the black pants with the yellow and white piping. And Ottawa on the road with the white shirts. As this is kept alive, Pinto, he couldn't get to it. A one-timer set up there for Felino, And that was canceled off by Mandelisi. And now this is back around the net for Trent Frederick off the forehand. As he gets worked off the puck, Zoom trying to get there as well. Now Brandstrom, he's still being bought near the right side boards. As this puck is just kind of stuck right now. His players are battling all over the place. Ottawa will try to race for it with the brinket, but he can't get it out. Greer. Gets this one there for Frederick. Now McAvoy will spin with Matt Grizzly. Felino puts this around the right side wall. This will stay with the bees. McAvoy settled this back down. Felino will shoot. This one goes wide to the left side of the red line. And Zoom got stick lifted by McAvoy, but the Brinkett was able to finally get that out. DJ Smith squad is going to need some line changes. And they the same thing for Jim Montgomery. As he got 8.15 left to go in the second. Boston. It's across the neutral zone, off the stutter step backhand. Greer trying to gain the entry, but Ottawa just trying to get a couple stick battles in there with Matthew Joseph. And Zaka pick this up now for Pasta. As Pasta puts it around the inboard, set up off the one-timer, and that got blocked by Ottawa again. And about five of those are even have called in the last about three minutes. As Ottawa certainly been busy blocking the shots in front of Mandelisi. Trying to... Chip and chase was Matthew Joseph. Now he throws the body on Connor Clifton, but Pavel Zaka being the entry. He's really enjoyed his time coming from New Jersey to Boston. He's had a pretty good year. What a balanced scoring on Boston, but spearheaded by David Posternock with about 30 points ahead of everybody else. Much like the Seattle Kraken version in the east of the Boston Bruins, very stable on the four lines where anybody can get points at any time. 7.20 left to go in the second John and I are with you on the TSN feed to ESPN Plus. It's Ottawa and Boston. Ottawa and Florida Panthers are the only two teams that have beaten Boston twice in a season. A stone of 1 1 game as Walmart fought off the deflection. This stays in with Boston now in the defensive end as they just a sidestep a hit that Brandon Carlo and now Lindholm will get it. We'll just play this toward an open right wing, trying to find Brad Marchand. And a centering pass for Lindholm. He never stopped going to the left side of the crease, but the pass went just a little too far. Now a slap shot in the high slot. And somehow that was found by Mandelisi with the right glove hand. He makes the save in front of the traffic. 6.49 left to go. It's still 1-1 in the second. We're going to go to another commercial break. Apparently TSN's going to pay some more bills. Be right back. They played the theme music, but I still stopped the recorder, so that's just going to count the same way when I put this into Audacity when it's all said and done. <laughs> so well, we will stay right here. 20 shots to 15 with 6.49 left. So a defensive zone, zone, defensive zone draw upcoming here. It's Charlie Coyle against Shane Pinto. 10 shots to 2 this period for the Bees. Coyle ends up getting the win, but some help off of the push face-off. We'll go all the way down. And, again, this is going to work the same way. Pinto's going to have to do it one more time. There's 6.42 left to go in the second. Again, Ollie, I appreciate you listening, my friend. As you take a look at the NHL standings as we're waiting for the faceoff to get underway, the Boston Bruins are 42-8-5 and with 89 points. They are seven points ahead of the Carolina Hurricanes, who are the hottest team in the NHL right now. They have won 10 of the last 11. Face-off win, trying to drive the middle of the blue paint as this one goes wide. I'm going to pick up that comment in a second when we get into the commercial break. As Zub tries to fight off Marshan. Marshan, great stutter step move off the toe drag. And this will go to the brinket. Oh, flip the entry down here for Ottawa as they try to gain zone entry. But this will go to the Bees. We'll play on the DN as McAvoy will get this across. And now Grizzly. We'll get the drop in the high slot. It's Marshawn into the traffic. We'll get it right back. Try to fire it again. This one goes up the right side wall. And a nice stick tap ahead by one of the Sens. As this gets spin around, that was Austin Watson. I try to make a play out of nothing. And now this could be something here for Boston. They can hold that blue line. It's Connor Clifton. He stays patient. He just tried to hit Taylor Hall with a shot more so than a pass as this is spun back around. Here's a chance now for Gambrell. He got... Stop short side by Linus Olmark. And now Ottawa will pick this back up. Gambrell tied up momentarily. 
And now DeBrus, as this goes off sides with 5.32 left to go in the second. Now I think we will go to a commercial break because there will be some glass issues and need some repairs. So I will be right back. We may have a little bit of a delayed break because I think there's going to be some glass repairs in behind the boss that's in your left side face-off dot. There's a little bit of a commercial here. So the only other game that is underway, Florida has tied it 2-2 with 25 seconds left to go. That one is on NHL Network only. It was Eric Stahl and Mark Stahl, the Stahl brothers. The only one they don't have is Jordan. He's still in Carolina. It was Stahl from Racco Gudis, Eric Stahl, and then Mark Stahl, his second of the season on defense from Matthew Kachuk and Ito Listerainen at 1723. So Stutzla off the faceoff one, he tries to get to it. It's Pinto and Carwell will work at this and Taylor Hall. Actually, we'll get a couple of stick checks. Brushes his side across the red line as Boston gains the entry. Picked up off of Thomas Chabot as one of the Senators got absolutely bodied near the left side of the red line, Hampus Lindholm. Also out there as well, Stutzel will go all the way back and play this one, try to get this transition in the offensive end. Here's an opportunity for Brandon Kachuk. It was off the right pad of Linus Allmark. He was by himself. He just ripped that one as hard as he could as this goes all the way back down the ice. So Kachuk's had a couple opportunities. One of them, he hit the right side post in the first period after the setup on a Five-on-three power play from Jake Batherson. And that one was a nice stretch pass from Shabbat. Kachuk was on his lonesome. He let it go near the right side dot. Hammered that wrister. Connor Clifton picked it up and iced it. So we'll have to do this again. Ottawa wins the draw. This goes back to Thomas Shabbat in the high slot. Now into the left circle. This one goes over the shoulder of Hampus Lindholm. Near the left dot. Trying to get Sticked out of the air as Batherson will play this toward the left side dot off the back pass. Another opportunity now on the high slot again as one of the Sens can't get a stick on it. And Marshawn will just put this here to Mandelisi. Set it back up here as Ottawa. Another breakout opportunity pass. Here's Batherson in between the circles now. Pinto with the backhand as it was stalled by the stick blade of Linus Olmark. And now Pasternak. Try to get into the neutral zone as Ottawa's finally starting to make some inroads here in the second period. It was been dominated by Boston. At one point, it was 14 shots to two in this period. Now it's back to 21 shots to 20 in favor of Boston, but it's a 1 1 score line. So it's going to be guarding for this Matinee Day game on TSN. Glad you can join me. It is a lot of fun to get an early assignment here because we'll be able to get a normal dinner time and everything else before we get to tomorrow on the side of it between the L.A. Kings and the Minnesota Wild. So I won't know what to do with myself for the rest of the night. But figured I was already busy over the weekend side, so we're just getting used to that same sleep schedule for a couple of days. So we'll get an early game here on President's Day. So a neutral zone draw. This one's won by the Bees. Spun back around. Carlo. And now Forbert. Try to gain the neutral zone, but this one gets intercepted. And now Gambrell off to the races near the right side on the faceoff dot. Bruins. 
try to get to it is Trent Frederick. Falls down to try to get this one out. He finally will. Foligno and Frederick will get this one down the ice. And Belisi will play this with the goal stick almost turned over by Ottawa Senator with Austin Watson. They avert the danger of 3.30 left to go in the second. Back into the D zone here for the Sens as they can look to uh, go left to right for the rest of this middle frame. Still a 1-1 contest, no goals in this second period. Picked up now by the Sens as Watson will spin in behind the left dot, working his way to the left wall. And this will get set up here for Gauthier. He's a couple of stick battles in between three different Bruins and now Matt Grizzly without the Charlie McAvoy. They'll play crisscross. Grizzly now. Trying to get this up the forwards. Nice touch pass. Here's Bergeron in the middle of the slot. He's still working with it. Off the backhand in tight was Krejci. And as he was coming back with reinforcements like Game Busters. And that was stopped in tight by Mandelisi with the right pad as he kept it out. 301 left to go in this second period. So Mandelisi's been excellent. I keep talking about that, but this is second game in the NHL right now for the 21-year-old. And again, you can say the same thing for Mad Sogard. He hasn't played a lot because when you have Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg injured, you need to be able to get that back end help. And the fact that you got two 21-year-olds from a lie on, and I saw on the other end, Mad Sogard is 196 pounds and six foot eight. He played yesterday in the 7-2 win against the St. Louis Blues. It's Mandelisi's net tonight off the back of the back. So 3-0-1 left to go in the second. And the Zebras are checking something on the headset. I'm not sure which, to be honest with you, as DJ Smith is biting on that gum to get a look at him. So the refs are talking about something to see whether they're going to call a penalty or whether or not it crossed the goal line. I didn't see it cross the goal line in any of my looks, but it was only maybe about 10 seconds of one, if that, if I'm being very generous. But that's what they're definitely going to review was a goal call. At 301 in the second, as Jim Montgomery is looking, I must be checking out the iPad. I didn't see much of anything, to be honest with any of you. So it's still 1 1 at 301 left to go in the second. It's 2 2 at the end of two for Anaheim and Florida. That's the only other game that's in action right now. So are we going to get a replay? So Mandelisi, this replay is showing absolutely nothing except the back skate. You can't see anything at all. And I don't see anything besides puck equipment. And all I really see is a extreme close-up of the jersey and nothing else. So that was a complete waste of time, but that must have been a situation room replay and nothing else because I didn't see Jim Montgomery try to get anything going. I said, can you see anything? I saw Jim Montgomery said, can you see it at all? No. So I don't even know what they were trying to do. That just seemed like a waste of about a minute and a half, but we're back nonetheless. 301 left to go in the second as it's no goal there for Boston, but I don't even know why they challenged it. So David Krejci going to get set to take the offensive zone draw. That's all he's back in. He says, let's go bees. Again, you have a lot to cheer for on that side if you're Boston all the way across. David Posternock and now McAvoy fakes the slap pass. What a spin move. Posternock now scores! What a play by McAvoy. He spun around. And then set up Posternock and all day to snipe after the gorgeous play by McAvoy. And Boston takes a 2-1 lead. I know Posternock scored the goal, but I would be lying to you, and I would be disingenuous to say if that was not all Charlie McAvoy. Fake the slapper after the pass came back to him off the right side inboards, spun around, and then set up Posternock near the left circle. He walked in, sniped that wrist shot, and had all day to shoot. And that's a hell of a shot, too, as he shot over the right shoulder of Mandelisi and lifts it. It's the 40th of the season for Pasta at 1706 from Charlie McAvoy. What a play. 2-1 now. Boston has the lead. They're trying to get their first win of the season against the Ottawa Senators, if you can believe that. They're 0-1-1 in the matchup so far as they lost the last game in the shootout 4-3. So 2.30, up to go in the second. John Henry Wicked watching the PSN feeds. You're not going to be dealing with Jack Edwards today. Even if you're a Boston Bruins fan, I don't hear many people say that they actually like Jack Edwards. This is picked up across the blue line side. A couple body contacts in there between the players' bench. And now 2.15 left to go in the second. This will go back to the Sens. They just conceded one, but they've been working on their breakout passes. They've been pretty 
Pretty uh, eagle by there by Tomas Chabot. Stutzla, good shot, trying to come together near the right side of the dot to go ahead and pick up the puck as Trent Frederick got punished. And now this will go back for Stutzla. We'll gain the quick entry pass. And this will be gloved out of the air by Tomas, by Linus Olmark. And he'll get the stop. 23 shots to 21 now in favor of the Bees with a buck 57 left to go in the second. So again, 2-2 at the end of the intermission in between Florida and Anaheim. I think by the time that this period will end, we'll get close to getting a live look in on that side. That'll be the only other game that I can show you because everything else is start till four. We've only got six games on the docket, two one o'clock games, two four o'clock games, and two seven o'clock games. So Pasta, he's got the goal for McAvoy. And now for Parker Kelly and Austin Watson. They're in the line that's out right now as this goes back to deep for right, Zoo. Ottawa stays with it. Now near the right side dot. Bees will collect. They'll take their time as this gets pinballed off the left side wall. Try to get cleared in. Taylor Hall and Krejci try to just hold this near the left side wall. They want to go to the dressing room up to one with Pasta's latest goal. Again, there's been a lot of late goals in this game. There's been one for Boston and there's been one for Ottawa. In the periods that if you work backwards, <laughs> Pasta knocks up the last one and Claude Giroux has the uh, first one in 1930 of the first with 105. We'll have to go on the second. Long outstretch pass will gain the neutral zone. Here's Pasta again. He tried to stick handle him between three senators. He's going to get this one back, try to get it around for Krejci along the end wall. And now Grizzly pull is in deep. And behind the net of Mandelisi, set this up D to D. That's McAvoy. Grizzly, they crisscross. Try to find Pasta knock near the right side dot. Now Pasta's got it in behind the cage, trying to set it up for a one-timer. And that goes just wide. Down to 40 seconds now. Shabbat will play this off the backhand. Batherson now for Dabrinkit. It's a nice idea with a little entry passes. They'll gain the wall, but the brink got to get on his horse. He gets this back, D to D. As Chabot is finally open, he's going to have to pinch in now and try to keep this puck alive as Parker Kelly and Shane Pinto will move this around. This goes back to Chabot. It's Zoom with a shot. A couple rebound opportunities. Olmark finally gets a chance to hold on it. And now we have a headlock as uh, Pinto gets knocked down. McAvoy. Definitely still has a piece of him as McAvoy's got some hands in his own face as he was given a little bit of a face wash. And now we finally get a little bit of a meeting as everyone has their camera phones out nowadays and trying to get a piece of the action. 24 shots to 23 in favor of the Bees. The way to school by Pasta. It's a 2 1 marker for Boston now with 17 seconds left to go in the second. So good luck in design there by Ottawa and they just moved the puck all the way around the horn. It was a shot from Zoo. And a couple of whacks at it there as Pinto was trying to get a piece of the Hamannick, Batherson. They were trying to defend as Zaka, Krejci, Frederick, Grizzly. Just a whole bunch of face washing going on. Nothing can really be differentiated. But it's been pretty busy. 2-1 in this second period. Got about 17 seconds left for which to work. So this should set you up for a good third period. And so far between the three games, and we're in the middle of this third game right now. Uh, Freddie Jackson says, do you think Stutzla will get two more points before the game is over? I am not quite sure on that, my friend, because Stutzla, if you look at it right now, he does not have a point in this game. So I'm going to say no. Boston has a 2-1 lead. They have not won a game in this contest so far. They are 0-1-1 against Ottawa. So if you're looking at him to get at least two points, he'd have to get that in the third or maybe possibly overtime. This is a 2-1 lead for Boston, so I'm going to go with no. When we come back, we'll call the third period. We'll see if Boston holds on to the lead and get their first win in this four-game series. So that would be my one, Freddie. I'm going to say no on that side. Well, two more points. He doesn't have any yet. That's going to be a lot to ask. And I think Omar will finally be able to shut something down. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back, and we'll take a live look at between uh, the Florida Panthers and the Ducks. It's the only other game going on right now. Okay. <clears throat> 
it rises to the moon. Wow. Okay. Groove. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm going to type this uh, goal in and some other stuff there for the story, and then we will uh, get caught around the league of what's left of and answer any other questions, because I know I'll go back to the question that was just posed on the YouTube side here in a moment. Okay, two shots this game so far. New Well, you're in a bit of an advantage point coming to Ottawa. You know a couple of guys pretty well. And Matthew Joseph and Thomas Chabot. How much does that help you? I mean, it's awesome to play against uh, former, uh, former teammates. You know what I mean? Uh, they included me really well this morning. Uh, it's just a great feeling. We're all really happy to be joining this time. What was your feeling when you heard about the trade? Uh, honestly, it came as a surprise to me, but I was really excited. You know, I was looking for a fresh start in the opportunity. Uh, more playing time, you know, getting to know some more of you guys. So it's just awesome right now. So at your best, what do you think you bring to the Ottawa Senators? I mean, they're a guy with a lot of speed, um, big uh, big physical guy, can hit, can shoot the puck, can skate, just play a 200 foot game from the Noah. This is also being a good teammate that uh, we have a great group of guys here. Thanks, Joe. Thank you guys. And look back inside our Senators studio, alongside Frankie. I'm Lindsay, and let's dive right in. The Boston Bruins are the league's best team for a reason, Frankie. They push ahead up 2 1 thanks to David Kostrinoff's 40th goal of the season. But this setup from Charlie Matt was really what caught your eye there. Absolutely. And one of the things that really separates the star players, the truly elite players in the league from everyone else, is the fact that they can adapt to change so quickly and so easily. They're not robotic on the ice. And you see this play, Charlie McAvoy could very easily just put it into a corner, but understand that Alex DeBrinkett is going to overreach, and he has an opportunity to spin off and set up David Pasternak, who makes no mistake, and Kevin Van is a little deep in the net. But, you know, players throughout the season will kind of fall into these runs from time to time where you feel good. Uh, and you feel like you're just playing the game for Charlie McAvoy. That's excellent awareness there in a situation where he reads the play, understands that there's a play a little more flashier of a play to be made, and they make the Ottawa Senators pay. Yeah, and the Senators is doing their best to keep this a tight game. They look to Kevin Mandelaki between the pipes. As we know, they can just his second NHL start. He had that 26 save performance in his opening NHL debut. And so far, looking pretty sharp, isn't he? Really sharp. And he's a big reason why the Ottawa Senators are still in this game. And we even see Bobby and Rose tonight. There's a number of times where he's making different kinds of saves. He's battling through traffic. He's tracking the puck east-west. And, you know, you think about a guy, the journey that he's gone through. He's a former sixth-round pick. He's played six games in the ECHL this year. And he had an unbelievable NHL debut. 
and that would be back side up where we talked about it before the game how that would be a challenge now you have all your adrenaline for your first nhl game and now you need to find it again with the team in front of you that's playing it back to back and you know you see his body at work tonight and it's save after save at crucial moments crucial spots on the ice so you know another excellent performance for, for kevin mandalese and now you head into the third period here with where a team that we've seen them mount comebacks in the past and they have the explosive offense that they can all right, so the one little nugget that we can put into the second period was a David Posternal goal again. Absolutely beautiful goal. It was the best goal of the game so far. Maybe one of the best goals that you'll see all day. Charlie McAvoy gets a bank pass near the right side of the wall, fakes a slapper, spins, able to buy some time as they knew that there were going to be some overcommitting off of the defensive side. It was able to find David Pasternak near the left circle. He walked in just a little bit with a couple extra skate slides and then absolutely sniped the top right of the crossbar to go ahead and beat Kevin Mandelisi for a 2-1 lead for the Boston Bruins. Mandelisi has been absolutely terrific, but that play by McAvoy was otherworldly, and that's why Boston has a 2-1 edge. Boston in that second period, they played more Bruins-like. And what I mean by that is they absolutely dominated on that shot board. So now it's, it's at 24 to 23. And toward that third period of the time, I think they were out shooting the Ottawa Senators 14 to 2. So my first period numbers, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull that up, it was 13 to 10. And now this one was 14 to 10 on the other side. So Ottawa caught up a little bit. But it was about 14 to 3 at one point for Ottawa got some of these chances. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in as far as the shots. Twenty-six seventeen on the hits in favor of Ottawa, so even off the back to back. But it's a really young team. Again, a lot of the majority of the great players are between 20 and 24 years of age, as we talked about the last time we covered Ottawa. Now I get a chance to look at Kevin Mandelisi, another 21-year-old goaltender with Mad Sogard because of the Anton, Fools, Anton Forsberg and Cam Talbot injuries. So here's the other thing, because I know Freddie's probably gone now, but I'll mention this on the YouTube side because I know he said this again. Do you think Stutzel will get two more points before this game is over? And I said no at the end of the third. And the reason why I say that again is because Ottawa was outshot in that period. Again, at one point it was 14-2. Now it's 24-23. So they're only up by one, and Ottawa closed the gap a little bit. They had a little bit of a push. Kachuk got robbed of a couple. Olmark made some excellent saves. Dylan Gambrell robbed got robbed by Olmark when Brady Kachuk absolutely pinned Havis Lindholm behind the net off the boards. So Olmark's made some great saves. I don't think Olmark's going to give up. He usually only gives up less than one, you know, less than two a game. He's still at 1.95 goals against. And that's gotten higher as Boston has lost a few of these games, but now they've won three in a row again, and they've looked like the same old team with the exception of the Carolina Hurricanes right now are the hottest in the NHL, even though Boston still has the best record. So that's why I'm going to go with the no side of it. I think Boston looked more like they usually do. They took control in that second period, and I think they're going to go ahead and take this home, especially with Ottawa off the back-to-back. -back. I know it's a young team, but it's a lot to ask, especially when Boston is already 0-1-1 on the season against the Sens. Again, the only team to beat them twice is the one that's in action right now in between the Florida Panthers and the Anaheim Ducks. That's 18-16 left to go in the third. Let's take a live look, and I'll flip this one back on the initial network because we got some time to go ahead and do so.
with Bobby Gibson, and then there's the, the cross check after. So Matthew could chug that cross check by Kevin Shattenkirk. And again, when I say Matthew could chug, hopefully it doesn't confuse me on the other side when I get to go back and say Brady could chug. Because the could chug brothers are both in action on the night they dig in. Just 35 shots to 17 in favor of Florida. They've scored two straight, now they're on the power play. So this is the game as we talked about. In between the Ducks and the Panthers in a live look inside. We'll go back to the Boston Bruins and Ottawa when he gets back and away from the second intermission. That Florida, they don't have games in hand. They're in a decent spot in the standings, but in order to keep that, they gotta continue to win games. It can't just be the Matthew Kachuk Express. He's gonna need some help. They were down two nothing, now it's two two. And the Florida power play twenty two point two percent, thirteenth in NHL. This Valley Sports Sun feed. But this game's only on an NHL network right now. So both the Stahl brothers, again, Eric Stahl and Mark Stahl, Jordan Stahl's in Carolina. Those are the ones that scored for Florida. And it was Frank Petrano and Mason McTavish for the Ducks. As Montour tries to keep this alive near the right side of the faceoff dot. And this will go back to Montour. And now Barkov. Try to get it for Kachuk as he deflected right out in front. See if this can be held in. Brandon Montour will get back to the left side dot now, and this will go up and out of play off the stick. And this will stay as one of the young fans is eating some chocolate ice cream. Glad thing he didn't get hit with the puck. My goodness, because the glass panel was very close to where he was, as he's still just eating his ice cream. He doesn't really care about anything else at the moment. So even when you almost get smoked by a puck, you got to think about that chocolate ice cream, I guess, if you're the young lad. So Jakob Silverberg on a half break, and Bobrovsky makes the save shorthanded. 47 seconds left to go, and Florida's power play is being a live look in. I'm going to put him back to our game in a moment. We're taking a live look in between Florida and the Anaheim Ducks. This one's tied at two. Florida was just on the power play. They did not score. Matthew Kachuk's got one point in this game. Both the Stahl brothers had scored for Florida. Again, Mason McTavish scored for the Ducks, as well as the, the rifle, Frank Petrano. And Josh Mahura and Racco Gouda still crisscrossed. And somebody lost her stick. Now somebody's thrown her the ice. Carter Verhage is down. And Ben off for the Ducks, trying to feed him his lunch as his helmet gets ripped off. And the Zebras will go back and separate this. We're going to live look in between the Panthers and the Ducks. And we'll start flipping back over right now, though.
We'll see what awaits us here in this third period. Week two of the XFL kicks off Thursday. It continues all weekend. It's still a 2-1 lead for the Boston Bruins. David Posternock has got the latest. dropping things and all that so let's see now what's left to go here again it's still 2-2 between the Ducks and the Panthers it's only their game underway at 4 o'clock there's not a lot of games here on the NHL in the first sight so it's a good opportunity to cover some of these games because the NBA is in the all-star break all the way till Thursday so it'll be the Flyers and Flames at 4 the Kraken and the Sharks at 4 I think Cooper Hopkins like I said in the first intermission he should be happy I think both those teams will get a win Flames are his favorite team and then Seattle, where he's from, the crack and the Sharks. I think they're both should be a win tonight. And the Jets and the Rangers and the Islanders and the Pens, those are both at seven. So look out for at least the Jets and the Rangers. Again, the Pens and the Islanders should be good. They both need points. They're both in the same spot in the wall card. So that is intrigue by itself. But they just played a couple of days ago. So when you get the Jets and the Rangers on the other end of it, I think you want to check that one out because you could have Hellebuck and Sturkin in net. I think that one's going to be a must watch at seven. If the, put my money on that one as far as uh, viewing pleasures for today. <clears throat> so we're getting set for third period puck drop. The Boston Bruins got a 2 1 lead. The only goal that second period was David Posternock and Charlie McAvoy made one of the best plays of the game. Probably the best play of the day as he picked up the puck up the bounce off the right wall, faked the slapper, spun past his man, set up Poston near the left circle. As it will walk right in and shoot the wrist shot and lift it over Mandelisi in the right shoulder as the Bruins took a 2 1 lead. Shots are 24 23. Boston is 0 1 1 in the matchup. A lead two teams that have beaten, again, we have to say this, Boston twice in the season. As the Florida Panthers, who are underway right now against the Ducks, and the Ottawa, who are playing right now in this game, as Bergeron gets robbed by Mandelisi. He makes the right glove save. We'll do it again with a defensive zone drop coming for the Sens. Again, we're watching this on uh, ESPN Plus. I have the TSM feed because I'm not going to listen to anything with Jack Edwards, even though I'm giving you the play-by-play -play side. I want my ears to bleed. So 19:32 left to go in this third. It was really just underway in the final frame. They're going to zoom in on Mandelisi's glove, the 21-year-old. So really good. Elena Solmark again. He's doing the same things where he should be considered a Vezina favorite, let alone candidate. So fake it there from Clifton to McAvoy, and this one will go wide. Picked up now by the Sens as Gambrell will flip it down. And almost looking for a trade pick was Matthew Joseph. And he'll just have to matriculate this around the end boards as Coil. We'll watch this go above his stick to see if Ottawa can keep this in. They'll slap shot it toward Allmark. But this goes up and off the glass. So this will stay here with 1908 left to go in the third. 24 shots apiece now between these squads. Boston still has a 2-1 lead. Again, the only goal of the second period was David Posternock. Goals to open this game. We'll go ahead and take a look at those right now to get you caught up just in case you need to reset. It was uh, Jake DeBrusque at 15.09 from Brad Marchand and Charlie McAvoy. Brad Marchand set him up from behind and had a couple chances for DeBrusque to get that wrist shot off. The first one was stopped by Mandelis, and the second one was lifted over the left shoulder in tight inside the blue paint. And then Claude Giroux, it was... Uh, the Boston defense not looking very good on that first line of Matt Grizzlick and Charlie McAvoy. As they made a boneheaded play behind their own net, they turned it over. Grizzlick got caught down napping a little bit, 
He got puck lifted by Gambrell and then send it back out to Claude Giroux for the backhand power move at 19.30. And that was a 1-1 one -one tie until Boston scored the latest one from McAvoy in an absolute beauty. Again, Boston 29-0-2 with leading after the second period. So we will see if that continues. This game has been neck and neck. I think Ottawa, if they do lose this game, they will regret not scoring on the 5 on 3 alone gate and main advantage. They've had some power play time that they've not looked good on. And I think that that will need to go back to the drawing board. But again, this is the Boston Bruins. But 7 1 and 1 in the last nine for Ottawa. That's what they need to get back into the playoff race. And they've got to be able to contain that kind of stuff because, again, they might have a game in hand. But that's really all they have. They don't have the multiple, like the Buffalo Sabres or the Red Wings or things like that. They're only two points away from the Red Wings right now, who are three points out of the spot. So they're five out, Ottawa. I think they can do it. They definitely have the personnel to do so as far as the young offensive players. We talked about some of their back-end D pieces, and they're going to have to keep getting the work between Mandelisi and uh, Sogard because Cam Talbot and Anton Forsberg are injured. So 18.30, left to go in the third. John and I are with you at TD Garden in Boston. Boston trying to get the first win in regulation against Ottawa this season. they got one more meeting upcoming. Centered out of the middle of the slot was Bergeron. He got robbed by the paddle of the goal stick by Mandelisi. So, man, he's been absolutely stalwart right now. And that's the reason why Ottawa's kind of stayed in this game. There was times in the second period where Boston dominated on the shot board 13-2 before Ottawa came back and started to make at least like 15-10, as this is picked up by Boston in their own end. 17-55, if they go in the third, they're up by one. 25-23 on the shot board. That's good shot. He's going to gain the entry toward the right side of the wall, trying to get around Lampus Lindholm. And on Charlie McAvoy, it's good shot still with it, trying to kick it out in front of one of his teammates, Claude Giroux, and on good shot back on us, like a hyena on hamburger meat right now, trying to get around Lindholm, but Lindholm, nice play under duress. Able to get this one to Taylor Hall. Riding this up the back end of the right side boards. Now working on the right side red line. Spun around there for Smith. And Smith gets knocked off the puck. Parker Kelly trying to play that four check as Ottawa gains the entry. It's one on two. Put up the back turn. Stood slow, blew a tire, and he fell hard into the right boards. And that's not normal for somebody like him. Again, there must have been something slick on the ice or whatever it is because Stutzel is a magician game in the pocket, and he got absolutely worked by his own. So Artem Zub will drop this here for Chabot. Chabot has a long pass, gains the red line. And we'll see if the Ottawa Senators need to go back. No, they don't. This was able to stay onside. And now the Bruins will play this in their own end. They'll be going left to right in this third period. They're in the home black with the gold and yellow piping. The Ottawa, shirt, the Ottawa Senators are on the road with head coach by DJ Smith. They have the white shirts with the black pants and the red stripes. Zub and Zaka. They play crisscross there as they hit each other. And now the Boston Bruins will spin this around the end boards. They'll gain the entry to the left side wall, but this gets intercepted by one of the Sens on defense. Flipped in across. This goes up into the player's bench, so no penalty. 16-26 left to go on the third. Take a look at Bergeron on the bench. Was he a five-time Selkie award-winning trophies for Patrice Bergeron? Again, this is a first line that is... Still really held by Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron and David Krejci at times. Well, well you can put in Jake DeBrus. You can put in David Posternock, if you will. Krejci spent last year overseas. You were wondering what you are going to get from him. He's been one of the best Boston Bruins. He's just been very stable. And that's what you would expect. You know about those systems in there with Jim Montgomery. Again, they lost their Bruce Cassidy coach in the Vegas Golden Knights. They replaced with Jim Montgomery. You're not going to lose a beat. But, again, this – Team is very veteran laden. And for those who thought that the Boston Bruins weren't going to be that great of a team this year, and I remember some of that stuff on the color cast days when we were uh, working with Patrick Rush and had Pat Cast come in there and he was kind of making fun of me when I was giving Boston credit. Well, look at these guys now 42 8 5. They still look like they've always been, except now they're one of the best teams in the world. <laughs> So, posture not. Keep this off the back end with Taylor Hall. And this one gets far on. This is a right glove save by Mandelisi as he gets the stop with 16 11 once again on the third. So, 26 shots to 23 in favor of the Bees. They're up 2 to 1. It's been a tight game. Ottawa will rule the day if they lose this one. 
to not be able to be a little more consistent on the five on three man advantage or the four power plays that they did have, especially in that first period when it was a slow start for Boston. So David Krejci said to take the offensive zone drop. He does want to clean. And now it's Hall off the backhand trying to set it back up for Pasta. And this gets picked up by Debrinket. Alex Debrinket now. Go back up near the right side of the red line trying to get a break up pass over Batherson. It's like it's taken away by Taylor Hall. So a nice 100-foot seat there. Pasta not trying to get this one to David Krejci. This is offsides. 1548. It was a delayed offside at that as they let uh, Alex to bring it get knocked down off of a trip and Stutzla. You see him get slammed on the boards. You got the TSN feed, and thankfully he's okay. There's Sean Gothi on the other side. He was picked up from the Tyler Mott deal as Gothi went to Ottawa and Tyler Mott went back to New York Rangers as they're able to get a little more uh, grit and sandpaper. And Gothe is going to get a little more playing time here for the Sens. So I think it's going to work out between both sides. Because you got Vlad Tarasenko and then you got Ma. I think those are the right decisions there for the Rangers. They look like one of the best teams in the NHL. So Bergeron almost gets stick lifted. I'll back him this in as the Sens. They lose it. And this is given up now for Marchand. Marchand falls down trying to make a play. Able to get back up as this goes to the Sens now right to left. Pinto can't find it. And now Boston trying to work with it now as Kachuk gives a little hit before he goes right into the bench. A little bit slow to make that change, though. Now Marshan's got an opportunity here on the left side dot as it was saved by the left pad of Mandelisi. Flip back around. Ken Mandelisi is looking really good right now. No doubt about it. All marked just as well, but you would expect that for Mandelisi with his second start in the NHL. He's been fantastic. As it's three shots to nothing in this period right now in favor of Boston. They're still up 2-1. to one. It's been a slow-moving first Third period, I should say, especially here for Ottawa's. Boston's kind of clamped down in the second and third, which knew that they would. So this is played now by Stutzla. And now Gauthier. Gauthier tries to play it to himself on the left side of the wall as he gets around a, a Greer hit. This is kept now by the Sens. As they'll go D to D as Artem Zoom will dump this down deep in behind the net of Walmart. Brandon Carlo comes together to get a hit against the Brinket. And now DeBrusque. We'll race near the right side boards with the help of Foligno. Zoom will go all the way back and play it around the inboards. And now Ottawa will try to go right to left with 14-10 left to go in this third period. They need a goal. As Batherson, his shot gets deflected. Bees will be able to get a piece of it as Connor Clifton looking for a breakout pass. He's got one on the right wing side. Foligno with the drop near the right side circle. This one gets blocked and gets picked up by Debrinket. Don't know if he's going to be able to get back to it, though. But Ottawa does gain the entry off the drop pass, trying to look for Shane Pinto. And Batherson still working with the Brinkett, kind of keep this alive off the forehand, but Taylor Hall will not leave him alone. Batherson trying to spin around now for Pinto, and Connor Clifton will gain the intercept off of a backhanded pass in the middle of the slot. It's Charlie Coyle, but this will go back now. Shabbat, Brandstrom, they'll play the crisscross. 13-25 left to go in this third. We're at TD Garden in Boston. It's a 2-1 lead for the Bees. David Posture and I got the latest goal in the second period. As this is spun around the inboards now for the Bees, Hampus Lindholm turns it over. And now Coyle will go ahead and pick this up as Zaka just throws it toward an empty side of the right boards. Picked up now across the neutral zone as Posture and and now overskated it. Ottawa trying to get across that embracing B logo in the middle of center ice. Has a couple of holds. Lindholm has a pin toward the left side of the red line. So does the other side for Zaka. But this goes for Shabbat. Picked up now near the right side. Dot Shabbat is going to let go of one timer. This one gets blocked. It gets kept in by Pinto though. Flipped down into the uh, center circles. And now this is Zaka. It's one on two, trying to keep this alive off the floor, and he needs some reinforcements. Now it's one on three, able to get the back pass across off the backhand. And Marshawn just trying to make something happen. And Mandelisi makes the save with 12.30 left to go on the third. We'll go to a commercial break. And Marshawn trying to make this a two-goal lead. And we'll see what happens when we come back. 12.30 left. Appreciate anyone else that's bounced in between Twitter spaces and the YouTube. So that's been a good contest between Ottawa and Boston. 
sometimes you never want you never wonder and never know about the uh, early games that you're going to get what you're going to see I figured between Ottawa winning the last couple, we'll see if they keep the same kind of effort up the back to back against Boston. They have. But Boston's got a 2 1 lead as Pasta had the latest goal. It's been a good contest, though. A couple four o'clock games upcoming for you are the Seattle Kraken and the Sharks, and the Philadelphia Flyers and the Calgary Flames. Other than that, it's seven o'clock games, with the latest one will be uh, the Winnipeg Jets and the New York Rangers. I think you want to keep a look on that one if you're looking for some. 7 Eastern Hockey, as far as Hellebuck and Sesterkin. And then the other game at 7 will be the Penguins and the Islanders as the rematch from playing a couple days ago. Only other one live score to tell you about is, is another 115 start. It was the Anaheim Ducks and the Florida Panthers. That one's tied at 2. Florida's got a pair of goals in that second period. But there are a pair of goals in the first from Anaheim. It was the Stahl brothers that had both goals in the second for the Florida Panthers. And Mason, Mason McTavish and um, Frank Petrano had the goals for the Anaheim Ducks. It's about 7.46 left to go in the third in that game. Our game's 2-1 Boston with 12.30 left to go in the third as we're in the middle of a commercial break. Watching this one on ESPN Plus on the TSN feed. And uh, we'll get this squared away probably in about 25 seconds or so. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me on President's Day. A little bit of early action. Tomorrow I'll be back to the normal time slot. It'll be 8 p.m. Eastern in between uh, Minnesota. So Amanda Lacey able to make the save. As now Boston is in the power play. i got to change the batteries in this recorder. So they cut in late. This is Boston 0 for 3 on the power play. Amanda Lacey makes the save with the right pad on DeBrusque. And this gets sent back down the ice. So I'm going to try to do both of these at the same time. And hopefully my fingernails can uh, figure this out. So 11.55 left to go in this third. Boston on the power play. And about a buck 15 in which to work with. And they will gain the... Neutral zone, the Ottawa Senators, and for the back down is here comes Boston all the way back down the ice. I'm going to try to do two things at once here for about 45 seconds. I apologize, guys, as i got to get these batteries back into this feed. So this penalty is trying to be killed right now, and the minute left to go in the Boston power play. And now Bergeron picks this up now near the right side wall. We'll spin back across for Charlie McAvoy. Marchand will flip it as this gets dumped back down the ice. Gambrell gets it all the way down, and it's going to be 40 seconds left to go in the Boston power play. It'll be their fourth of the game. Boston gains the entry now with Taylor Hall near the right side dot. Taylor Hall gets knocked down to his knees. Play for Krejci. He's going to let the bomb go. This goes off the stick shaft of Mandelisi. And now Batherson will try to get a piece of it as he gets knocked down near the left side of the red line. And this is spun around the end boards. And Ottawa able to get the clear one more time as this touches the stick of Olmark. So three shots for the Bruins on that power play. They do not score. It was the fourth of the game for them. And 10-20 left to go in this third period. So 10-15 left to go in our official recorder action. The Boston power play did not to convert. They had three shots as we had a little bit of a battery issue, but we're good to go. So everything else is all set up here. We're on the YouTube side and the Twitter Spaces side. John and with you on the call on the TSN feed. It's 10-10 left to go in this third. It's a 2-1 score line in favor of the Bees. David Posternock has still got the last one of three shots. Take a look at some of these right now and listen to it. It was David Krejci who tried to uh, slap shot this thing high on the left side of the crossbar. Just lifted it over as it was blocked aside. And then a stick shaft saved by Kevin Mandelisi. He's been absolutely excellent in this game. He has made 28 saves out of 30. And Linus Olmark has stopped 24 out of 25. And as we talked about Ottawa, they're going to – Missed some of that time. They did not score on the five-on-three extended, if that's what it ends up being in a 2-1 win. So Stutzla 
He and the Andrew try to drop this one for Kachuk, and this one goes high. As Omar didn't have to make the save, but he didn't look over his left shoulder. 9.45 left to go in the third as we're way past the halfway point of the third period. Boston is just out in front as this has been another good game between these two teams. Again, Ottawa has beaten Boston twice. Boston is 0-1-1 in the series so far, and they'll have one more game upcoming after this. This is trying to get picked up here by Brady Kachuk. Picked up off the backhand by Coyle. He'll just try to send it to an empty right wing. As now this is faking the slap pass all the way across. This goes off of the back of the skate way to Tomas Chabot. Now near the left side wall. Bruins trying to get this out. As Linus Olmark holding on to the right side post. This is kept in. And the high slot near the right side blue line. It's Kachuk. He'll put this around the inboards. As Batherson gets worked off off the puck. Pinto trying to join in as well with the help of uh, Claude Giroux. And now Boston back in their own. And it's Charlie Quill with Derek Forbert. Finally able to get something going right to left as Toronto, Brant, Toronto. Ottawa, Branson goes in and gets this, and the Brinkett makes the save. My apologies, I'm all over the place. 8.44 left to go in this third. Are we getting a commercial break for real this time? Because they've kind of faked the uh, TSN Hockey Night Canada music, but now they're going to do it. 8.44 left in the third. Come right back. All right, so the batteries and everything else are set. Everything is good. We're going to finish up the rest of this third or overtime if needed, and then we'll get you the game store at hopelesssportsguide.wordpress.com. And I'm in Florida at 3-3 now. Let's see who those new goal scorers are in the third period. So one apiece on that side is Dmitry Kulikov. He's having himself a game. He's got a point and assist from uh, John Klingberg, the D side, and Ryan Lomberg with his eighth from Forsling and Nick Cousins. 12:51 and 14:09 of the third period, respectively. John Gibson has made 47 out of 50 saves for a 9:40, and then the other end, Sergey Bobrovsky, 17 out of 20. So, 47 stops for John Gibson. He's going to get well over 50 by the time that's done. So, eight votes now. In between the sends, uh, will they make the playoffs? It's a 50-50 split right now. I think that that's fair by both of you guys. Even if you're Boston fans or if you're not, for anyone that's ended up listening to this, I think that's a very fair split because right now they're kind of on the borderline. So to have you guys split right in the middle there, I think makes a lot of sense. So kudos to all of you who have voted on it. So we're in a commercial break, but we're going to be coming back in the action here shortly. Second NHL star for Kevin Mandelisi, as they say. And again, the particulars out in front of it, 28 out of 30, 933 save percentage, 956 in the first one. He's been spectacular. Lena Solmark been a bit better, though, 24 out of 25. The 2-1 Boston Edge. No goals yet in this third to speak of. So offensive zone draw upcoming here for the Ottawa Senators as we're at TD Garden in Boston in this matinee day game. We've got about a 125 start. We said it for a 1 o'clock puck trip. We had some ceremonies before the game started, I believe, that Sportsnet did not show or TSN did not show. So now this is picked up out of the air. This is an opportunity. It's three on two. One Pasternak takes an absolute barrel roll. He's looking like Star Fox 64 as this is spun around toward the right side of the red line. Do a barrel roll. I was thinking about that one. As this goes back to Alex Debrinkit, former Chicago Blackhawk. I still can't believe he's on the Iowa Centers, to be honest with you. I've got a long time to digest from the uh, NHL entry draft from last season. Flipped across the red line now. And Boston will get a chance to get back to it as Hampus Lindholm will watch this one go, which is Charlie McAvoy. This is kept by the Ottawa Senators and flipped down. This is a break opportunity. Passed off the backhand, and he scores. What a sick look at play by Pasta. As Ottawa looked like they had puck possession in the offensive end, Pasta said, I'm going to go ahead and leak out just in case. I get a chance to get the puck to find me. 
And Kevin Mandelisi, for as great as he's been, and I will make no mistake about this, what a foot pass on the other end. Off the backhand and right in between the five hole, he pretty much took off Kevin Mandelisi's jock strap. I don't think there's any other way to say it. It was just a casual slide off the backhand for David Pasternak. A little cha-cha slide for you, if you will, as that was a nice chip pass, whether that was uh, McAvoy or Lindholm. Absolute great A pass. Pasta wide open and finishes it off like a goal scorer does. McAvoy gets his second assist, and both of them are absolutely spectacular. The 41st goal of the year for Pasta. It's a 3-1 lead now, so Boston's probably going to be able to take this one home. Again, I expected something like this, but this game is still very close. And Mandelis has been excellent. So you get a chance to look at the young goaltenders there between Mad Sogard yesterday in the 7-2 win and now down 3-1 between Mandelisi. Not been his fault. He's been excellent. Elena solmark has been very good per usual. 31 shots to 25 as this is flipped down the ice. This will touch the stick of Olmark. Now for 7-10 left to go in the third. John out here with you on the call. And now Bergeron will ride the right side of the boards. We'll try to gain the entry as it gets away from Shane Pinto. They try to center it out front back to the middle of the left side of the blue paint. And now Zub, he lost it. I think this might have been played with the high stick or a hand pass. 7.55 left to go in the third. Is get a look at Pasta on the TSN side. Again, 41 goals on the season. It was good to see that he was a fan entry vote in because I think if you didn't put him in there, he'd, he'd be doing something completely wrong. He had to go ahead and do that. They had Linus Olmark as the first entry there for Boston because you knew he was the best goalie in the Atlantic, but you had to get the uh, fan vote in there. Boston, they got that one right. You really couldn't get that one wrong. No doubt about that as it's flipped in now. High off the end boards near the left side of the red line. And Zoom lost it. And now here's a chance for Boston. Up to four. It's going to be Bergeron. He's going to dump this all the way down for Marshawn. As Branson will get this down. Olmark will watch this. Go for a nice 6.30. Love to go in this third. Drawn out watching this matinee Ding game with you. 77. The world's game leading scores this season. 77 points for Pasternak. 79 for Kucherov. 82 for Drysdale. 102 for McDavid. So Pasternak belongs in the elite of the elite, alongside Matthew Kachuk, Eric Carlson, and Tage Thompson with 71. Pass has gotten two today, two goals. So it's going to be David Krejci with an offensive zone draw. This is actually won by the Sens, flipped all the way down across the Embrazen B, and Grizzly make the pass. And for Pasta, off the backhand, and gain the entry at Zoom. This little spin around. For Branson, now down across the red line. This will go all the way back. It will touch the goal stick of Lena Solmark. Again, he's up by two. And you give him that kind of advantage. His goals against is 191. You think he's pretty good. Pasternak getting the forehand. Trying to look for a no-look cross pass to Brandon Carlo. Now in behind the net, the Bs try to get one up. We'll try to see if they get Pasta his hat. If the Ottawa Senators pull the net minor. Again, it's 552. A little bit early for DJ Smith. But I saw something yesterday that I can mention as the shot goes off in the left pad of the Mandelisi that I've never seen before. It was a seven-minute net pool as the Nashville Predators ended up getting a goal as they won, uh, I think, six to three against the team they played the other day. They scored a goal of the seven-minute empty net pool, so who knows what you'll see. 540 left to go in the third. Pasta's made it 3-1. Bizarre says, hope Ottawa comes back. It would be nice to see uh, Bizarre. They already got a couple wins in this season matchup. If you bet on them, that's a whole different story on that side. Then I understand where the allegiance would, says would lie. But questions probably going to save with about five and a half left to go. That's probably not going to happen at this point, especially since they're going to be looking for an empty net pool and maybe Pasta gets a hat. So probably not this time, but the game was still close to their credit, even off the back-to-back. -back. I thought they played pretty well against the Bees today. Back-to-backs are tough, but again, with the five-on-three man advantage, and then the first they had four chances in the power play in the first period. 
and they just didn't get it done. One of the shots for Batherson was set up in the middle of the slot for Brady Kachuk. He did hit the right crossbar on one of the four power plays, but everything else, there was a couple where they just didn't get shots. And I think that's going to end up biting them. So a little bit of a commercial break there is not much time left. So game story is going to be a hopeless sports guy.wordpress.com when it's all said and done. It'll be on this side. So you won't miss anything. You won't get any extra curriculars. It'll just be the game itself. And then tomorrow we will be back at uh, about 8.15 Eastern between the LA Kings and the Minnesota Wild. Looks like we're going to be going to overtime in between the Anaheim Ducks and the Florida Panthers. That one started three with 14 seconds left. A pair of goals in the third period. And Pasternak roofs one wide as we just come back in from the break. And Pavel Zaka gets taken for a ride. This is put around the inboards now. Shane Pinto trying to beat David Krejci with the clock. This is stuck in between his right skate plate. 5.15 left to go in the third. Picked up off the pass and now trying to go right to left as Ottawa's they gain the entry. 3-7-3 goals for second in the NHL for the Boston Bruins. So they do score a lot. So they're under their average right now. I'm just under it at three. Getting close to about 3.75 as far as all that. So almost a shoot of four goals a game. Pinto shot. That one gets stopped by Lamarck with the left pad. As this gets flipped around for Chabot, trying to put on the middle, and this one stopped again. This Pinto got a piece of it with the help of Batherson. 440 left to go in this third. Now in the middle of the circle, Batherson lets one go, and this goes off the stick blade of Walmart. And now Ottawa getting a little bit of that press as it's Chabot trying to get this toward the right side wing. And Artem Zub will get a chance to collect. Zub puts this across for Batherson. He's looking for a deflection. His Pinto was sitting right on the doorstep. Chabot. He gets knocked down. There was a check in front. Ottawa's going to want the penalty. They're not going to get one. About 4.15 left to go in this third. It's still 3-1 Boston. So it's set to uh, plug this phone in right now. So this is picked up near the left side of the red line here by the Sens. And then sent all the way down the ice. So four minutes left to go in this third. Gain in the red line are the Ottawa Senators. They're going to have to try to get in and get more chances as they did about 30 seconds ago. See if they can hold this blue line. No, they can't. If Pasternak only needs one more for a hat trick and DeBrusque chance, this goes up and on a play. 345 off the go in this third period. So Boston's looked pretty good toward the second and third period. The first period was kind of a little bit of an advantage here for Ottawa, but as we said, with the main advantage and things that they've had, they just didn't take – advantage in the right time when they had two extras on the ice and then as it's going along boston's kind of put that vice grip as you would expect them to do they want to get their first win in this series still have one more game as atlantic division foes can meet up for four times and that's what we'll get the next game will be at td garden both of the first games are at the canadian tire center so it's going to be an offensive zone draw coming here for the bees as bergeron will win this one clean and now Boston Bruins are 335 away from getting another win in regulation. As this goes now near the right side wall. Although the Sens have not played a bad contest. Although they might be going to the box. So that's a hand pass. 331 wants to go in the third. It was uh, Charlie Coyle that was absolutely upended. as a couple of stick blades. He got stuck. He had nowhere to go. But it's going to be a hand pass with 331. It's Jim Montgomery. So he's wanting the power point, but he's not going to get it. 32 shots to 26. It's a pair of goals for Pasta in the second and the third. That's why Bruins have a 3-1 lead, the latest goal scores. Neutral zone draw here for the Sens, but this will go back to Boston. They're going to try to work left to right. And the rest of this third period is they're pretty close to solving this away. Lena Solmark, another outstanding game. And on the other end, Kevin Mandelisi, just his second initial start. Absolutely terrific, no doubt about it. He's kept his team in the game all the way through. Ottawa's had some chances and some crossbars and power play early, but I don't think it's been enough because Boston, toward the end of the second and third, they kind of pressed the action as you would expect them to do. So picked up now by Felino. Felino trying to look for a deflection, 
And this one was fought off by the stick shaft of Mandelisi. And now the other way, Pinto trying to drop this one. Picked up here by Debrinket as it's fired just wide, and somebody lost the stick. It was one of the Bs, and a lot of Thomas Trabot to hold. Trabot will play this across for the defensive partner, and he designs it. Claude Drew, this goes off of him, so the net is pulled. We'll see if Pasta can get a hat. But we got to see if Ottawa can get a couple goals here. Stutzla, Trabot will play this across for Debrinket as this one goes just wide as Claude Drew couldn't get to it. Now it's centered in front of the blue paint, but now it's in the high slot. It's Trabot off the centering pass. And now near the left side of the wing, trying to find Alex to bring it. Alex to bring it. They try to play him a lot like Alex Ovechkin, but he's not open to the left slot, and Boston's closing him down. Stutzla will get it back. Stutzla will fire it on, right in the bread basket of Walmart. He'll make the save with 204 left to go in this third. So it's still going to be a six on five advantage as Ottawa's got the empty net pulled and in two goals, but there are just over two minutes left to do so. Appreciate you guys joining me for this matinee day game. Bozarp says, thanks for the stream. I drive a lot, and it's nice to be able to listen to something different other than regular coverage. You know, hopefully I'm not butchering so, so many of the names and all that stuff because I don't really cover Ottawa a whole lot, so I'm trying to get everything else in front of me. But we do a lot of coverage, and I'm always on here on the Twitter spaces and the YouTube side to follow along, so I appreciate it, man. So face-off win for the Ottawa Senators, and Shabbat had this one block it away. Bees will get a piece of it for Marshawn. And now set this back up for David Krejci. Krejci put this along the inboards, but this will find the sins. With the buck 45 left to go in this third. We're at the TD Garden in Boston. Boston's pretty close to getting this win right now. They'll get the first win in this season series as it's flipped in. They're the right side of the red line. But Ottawa played a pretty good contest, even off the back-to-back. -back. They were coming off the 7-2 win of the Blues. They were 7-1-1 in their last nine. So Zaitsev. Put this across the red line. This will be stopped by Olmark as the shot and type in the right circle is held by the Vezna netminder. That's what he would be right now. The season ended today for the buck 20 off to go in third. 32 shots to 29 in favor of the Bees. A 3-1 scoreline for Boston. So when I think about Pinto, Batherson, uh, Tim Stutzla, Alex Debrinket, I know Claude Giroux was the elder statesman that was brought in with uh, Brady Kachuk, but a lot of their best players are 20 to 24 years old. Mad Sogard got the 7-2 win yesterday. He's a 6'8", 196-pound net minder. He's probably going to get the next start as Cam Talbot and Anton Folsberg will continue to be week to week. So my point is, with all the young players that they have, good goaltending and some good pieces in the back end, Everybody wanted Ottawa to be really good right now. They're still within the playoff chase, and they're going to need to continue that 7-1-1. They're going to fall today and go 7-3-1 uh, in the last 11. But still, if they can keep that pace, there's no shame in losing to Boston today. They can get themselves right back in the hunt. They're close. They're about six points out right now after this game is done. So they have a couple games in hand, which does help them when you're thinking about Washington and Florida. But they're going to need to keep that pace going. This is a good young team. And while everybody expected them to win right now and compete for the playoffs and do everything else, they're close. But I think they're next probably next year, probably next year at least I would say, they'll be right in the thick of things because they just need to get time to be able to gel and play together. So they're going to get it now off the empty net. It's Batherson. He's going to make this pass across for Chabot. Picks it up in the high slot. Chance for Drew goes intentionally wide off the inboards here. Starts to watch near the left side of the dot as this goes with Shabbat. Shabbat will fire it. Drew trying to pick it back up near the left side of the red line. 50 seconds left to go. Boston gets a piece of it. McAvoy will flip it, but he can't clear. Off the backhand, this goes in between Marshawn and skate play. Stutzla sets it up off the one time for Shabbat. This goes up in the air, and this goes into the crowd. And it stayed there for about five seconds. It got some hang time before it went up. 40 seconds left to go. It's a 3 1 scoreline still for Boston. And it's going to be another empty net pool at this point off of the uh, six shaft of all marking up and out of play. It's 40 seconds. So 32 shots to 30. Both goaltenders have been busy. Claude Giroux going to get set to take this offensive zone draw. Doesn't look like Pasta. He's on the players' bench right now. So if you're not really concerned about the hat, you wouldn't overly would be. You want to get the win more so than that. But the last couple goals have been pretty spectacular. Courtesy of that Charlie McAvoy in the first and the second period with that set up of the spin and fake slap shot pass. That was pretty nasty. As this was spun down to the left side of the red line, Batherson trying to get this around. And now Forbert, his pass got deflected, almost stolen. Claude Drew 
had a piece of it, but it was stopped by the left pad of Walmart because it went up and out of play again with 24 seconds left to go in the third. Now 32 shots to 31. So two hours and about 45 minutes will be the stream time, so not too bad. Still a lot faster than a baseball game. That's why they're trying to cut off on those pickoff throws, I suppose, in the 2023 season. As Claude Giroux going to get set to take the draw again unless he gets bumped out. So this will be Brady Kachuk. He will take the draw against David Krejci. I think he got the advantage on that side. David Krejci is that seasoned really veteran. He's 9 for 17 on draws. Brady Kachuk 4 6. So well, the 50% faceoff percentage here for Krejci has got the mass total of draws. Kachuk still 4 6. And Kachuk will win this one clean back to the defense. As this will go back here for the Bruins. They have a chance to shoot at the empty net, but it was cut off there by Zoo and spun around the end boards. Here's a chance for Pasta. He unselfishly makes the pass. This gets blocked out in front. I thought he might shoot with a hat trick. Down to three seconds. That's essentially going to end it. The Boston Bruins, they're going to take a 3 1 win at the TD Garden as they had a strong second and third period. David Pasternak at the last couple of goals and the Bees. Take this win in the matinee day game. Grab you can drummer for this President's Day stream. It's a 3-1 victory for Boston. As everybody's tapping the glass and have a good time. I will see you tomorrow about 8.15 Eastern for the LA Kings and the Minnesota Wild. Catch you then. Have a good day, everybody. Peace. David Pons knocked a couple of goals. Charlie McAvoy assists on all three Boston goals. And Kevin Mandelake, another impressive start. Thank you guys for joining me today. It was a 3-1 win for the Boston Bruins. Two goals and six shots. First start for David Postrock, Charlie McAvoy, and on the other end, it was Claude Drew. I'll see you guys tomorrow on 8.15 Eastern for the Kings in the Wild. Catch you then. Talk to you later.